Ah, uh, wow. Thought I would go live and do some crime time. Take it easy. That's pretty much it. We're gonna we're gonna watch a almost a two hour long video because I can. It's from Red Tree Crime. It's called the Shocking Interrogation of a Master Manipulator. Sounds pretty epic. So we're gonna watch it. Do I need to explain crime time any, at all at this point? We kind of all know what's going on here. That's why we're here. From an allergy degree, we watch true crime. True crime is bad topics. Take care of yourself, uh, etc. Right? I'm just gonna definitely not slowly play RuneScape while I watch this. Smile. <laughs> Plus, this 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, somebody, somebody's been attacked in my house. This is him, by the way. Somebody's been what? This isn't like an actual 911 call. He's like oh, the culprit. Yeah, they attacked who? Who was attacked? Uh, Someone get my uh, fires. Uh, uh, Mel Pluskovic. Mel Pluskovic was attacked. He was attacked by whom? Do you know? She, she was no, we, we just came home. She's on the kitchen floor. It's this, I, once again, as you know, I normally skip 911 calls. Uh, the guy on the phone is the guy who did it. So. Yeah, I took the, Spoiler. I took her son and my daughter outside. Her husband is inside with her now. So the husband attacked her? No, no, no. We just came home. We just came home. You came just home and found her injured on the floor? We found her in the kitchen. She's not moving. Yeah. Uh, She's better service. Well, let me reintroduce myself, though. I'm Detective Stoltz. I'll fix the camera in one second. Hi. Um, I appreciate you coming here voluntarily and, and talking to me. You're free to Idiot. do at any point or stop the questioning at any point. You're Idiot. You're not in trouble. You're not under arrest. And yeah, he is. Just to try to piece together what happened at the house. Okay. If, um, if we could speed it along a little bit, I, I would like to go see my family and yeah, everything. I understand yeah. that. I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to rush it or anything, but... I'm gonna, this Perfect fit is insane. Best I can. Okay. Yeah, he's going kind of crazy with those S bright pink shorts. L L I N. Do you think it's sitting that chair? This like, little big. This one, sure. That's fair, man. Switch it out. I'm sorry. It's okay. Me trying to get on any airline ever. Just push it back. A little bigger. Just squishing my legs. Hot pink right. shorts and a loading shirt. No Man's problem. going crazy. This is Jeffrey Scullins. Jeffrey is being interviewed by the Cleveland, Ohio police regarding the death of his fiancée's mother, Melinda Pleskovic. Melinda's body was found with knife and gunshot wounds on the floor of her home. Bruce. She shared that home with several other family members, including her husband, Bruce, Jeffrey, her daughter, Anna, and Anna's and Jeffrey's newborn child. Um... I'd like you just to tell me about your day. To start in the morning, um, from what I understand, tell me if uh, okay. tell me if I'm wrong. Um, living in the home after talking to this is good, right? We're chilling here. Uh, Bruce is oh, yourself, let me turn off alerts. Your fiance, Bruce's daughter, Anna. Okay, and you and Anna and your baby stay downstairs in the basement. That's our area. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And how long have you lived there? I couldn't even. Again, Seems real happy about it. After her birthday. So like a year, a year and a half maybe? A little bit less than a year and a half. I think that's that's rounding. I don't know the exact date when we moved in. Okay. That's fine. In, in the home, does everybody get along? Yeah, we we had a little bit of a fight the other day. Who's we? Uh Bruce Bruce drinks a lot. Um, this uh, this camera is so good because the police budget is so vast that you can't even see the suspect's mouth moving. He kind of came after me a little bit because he was upset because I said I would help him with stuff Crazy. The house, and apparently I wasn't doing it to his schedule, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so what do you mean he came at you? Oh, he didn't come I'm at sure you glad they like spent all their budget on very useful things. Nothing okay. Like a lot of unnecessary the weaponry. Was kind of like he sent a few text messages saying he's sorry and everything. It was kind of. I'm sure it wish. doesn't translate badly into other um, stuff that they don't so spend money on. Guys live under the same roof. Everybody kind of butts heads every once in a while. Yeah, I'm at the highest quality too. Like, hey, like, hey, pick this up, but not ideas. physical. Nobody's physical with anybody. No, okay. never. Okay. It's they're very. I love very that. After the police arrived at the crime scene, they were able to speak with all of the family members. 
What stood out to them was how Jeffrey reacted to the questions and how he showed no emotions at all. While all the other members of the family appeared shocked huge, as they cried together, yeah, huge red Jeffrey flag. stood off to the side, avoiding eye contact with everybody. And where do you work, Jeff? Right now, I got laid off. I was laid off two months ago. And how are you getting by lately financially? Anna, how are you how are you getting along financially as Anna? I've been kind of moving, I've been using a lot of my savings, and Anna's been paying for all the small stuff to help me out until I get another job. Do you have any investments? Any other income? Uh, rental houses. We have rental houses. We have my dad. You know, your father and you? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Jeff Scullin as well. He's a senior. Okay, you're a junior? Yeah. Oh, great. He, okay. He's a junior. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so crazy. I mean, like, once again, it's n like a high schooler. No, like named after his dad, like the second. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like this is not like a proven fact. But once again, a weird amount of people that do crimes like heinous stuff, like like killing somehow a bunch of them end up being like named after somebody. I'm telling you, like literally three videos ago, we watched a dude who was the fifth. I'm telling you. I hope it's crazy. How many rental properties do you have? Six. You have six rental properties and you're mm -hmm. scraping by? Only a few were rented. I think we just lost a tenant. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. The oh, fuck? I think we only have three. His dad, his dad is definitely keeping all the money. There's no way. I don't know off the top of my head the full math of it, but maybe I'll just give me a cut whatever I need. If I How is he a landlord and doesn't have a job? Oh, okay, so you don't get a regular cut. Your job like, is getting passive cut. income well, like I mean, a piece of would, shit. But he just like, if he goes, hey, you want, you need an extra $500, he'll give me an extra $500. So you do get a regular cut? You get your half? Do you, yeah, you, I guess you could say that. Okay. Wait, um, hold sorry, on. I'm really tired. Go back. Only... Only if you were rented, I think we just lost a tenant. Mm -hmm. Oh, boohoo, bitch. I think we only have three or four. And how much income does that bring you each month, you personally? I don't know off the top of my head the full math of it, but maybe I'll just give me a cut whatever I need if I ask him if I need some money. Okay. Wait. Oh, okay, so you don't get a regular cut unless you have No, not a regular cut. Well, I mean, I would, but he just, like, if he goes, hey, you want, you need an extra $500? <laughs> So you do get a regular cut? You get your half? Do you, do yeah, you, I guess you could say that. Okay. Wait, so he doesn't get paid per month or per property. He just says, Daddy, give me some money, and he gives him money? So he doesn't ha he's not a landlord. He doesn't have the properties. It's his dad. So he's just basically glossing. He's just basically sprinkling that he has daddy's money in and pretending it's him also having a job. When, like, being a landlord is not a job. You just... Hi. Can I help you? Okay. What a hilarious way to be like, yeah, well, my dad has a lot of passive income because he's taking on a bunch of land that people deserve to have. And so, like, I just kind of beg him for money every now and then. I don't really do anything. I just ask him. But, yeah, it's like a job. It's like a job. It's like a job suckling your dad's teat that you were named after. It's like a job. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really tired. Daddy, give me money, daddy. <laughs> um, I have a... Can I ask two questions? You sure can. Um, was everything with my dad's car okay? I don't know. I've been here. Uh, dad's car? What was, the hell's going on with his dad's car? Well, um, and what would, uh, would I be able to go get the dog sometime after this? or tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we want you to be able to take care of your dogs. Um, Listen, man. They're still suckling your dad's teat for money is a full-time job. Question answer for you. When we're done don't here, judge him. It's really hard well, forcing people to pay to live somewhere. Oh, we're still there. People? Yeah. Yeah, the police department and uh, BCI. Is so there. I can't go there until after they leave to get the dog? Or... We'll see. I, I could always you know, try to make an arrangement to get the dog. I mean, if I can't, can I just like, have someone dump some yeah. food in his cage? Yeah, absolutely. Or... Yeah. Is that, that, yeah, absolutely. That's good enough for me. Yeah. I just don't... Jeffrey acts like he is annoyed with the whole interview and that it's all just a big waste of time. He shows more concern for his dog than for the victim or the victim's family. True. If you found out that a family member you lived with was murdered, not only would you be fearful that you might be next, but you'd want to do everything in your power to help catch the killer. 
to be fair though if like something had happened between lunch and dinner for my dog or breakfast and dinner for my dogs and, like i had to go somewhere like i would probably say similar i would disagree just of the sense that like i understand the sentiment of being like i have to like someone needs to feed my dogs but acting annoyed is one is a different whole thing that's a whole different red flag i can understand uh i can understand asking someone to, to feed dogs what is that lean you guys have never done like the the elbow to knee to to hand to knee move because i totally don't i'd like you to start uh this morning, morning monday morning okay and uh tell me what time you wake up and what's your routine uh, right it's now, probably really it's probably same. straight Five male behavior, so guys. Today I didn't have any straight white male behavior is the. But I do think this. there's something to note. Last night, I, uh, my sister was over the weekend. Well, she left her book bag in my other car. I actually feel like sometimes I do this, and then like I immediately stop because I'm like, this feels uncomfortable. At my mother's. House. I don't know. Say but it again. Stop um, judging me. My sister. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm. No, I may have just thought about it. Saturday, my sister Anna and Megan and their friend went to Cedar Point for the bachelor party. Like a little, nice little thing. What's your me. sister's name? Ellie's gone. Ellie? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so tell me. But uh, the so reason I was talking Your about sister's that. book bag is in the Sabre. It was in my car, my other car. And then I went, she asked me to bring it. So I went there at like 11. I walked out the back door. And this was yesterday. Yes, it was last night. I don't know if Bruce mentioned it. We lost keys. We filed a replacement thing. He was cleaning all the cars, and we filed a report, not a replacement. I don't know what I'm talking about. He was cleaning the cars, and he lost keys, and people were hitting the alarm button and, you know, holding it down. We filed police reports and everything. But right when I got in Anna's car, because the truck was blocked in, I was just going to take Anna's Cavalier, the blue Cavalier. And I was going to drive over, unlock my car, and throw it inside the house, the book bag, and leave, you know. Right when I left, someone hit the the big alarm button. So like whoever does have the keys was like had to see me walk out at like eleven thirty last night. I just figured that was worth noting. I forgot to break that down. I don't think line. this that stance is that else. embarrassing, guys. I don't know why you guys are freaking out over it. I don't think it's that Jeffrey bad. Jeffrey just explained that the keys to his truck had been stolen and that whoever I doubt stole that chair is in any way comfortable. The alarm randomly throughout the night. The detective finds That's it very so strange douchey. that he would mention this. So he ignores it and he goes back to his original line of questioning. What the detective does is very know strange. Is that the murder weapon is actually inside Jeffrey's vehicle, and Jeffrey is setting up an explanation for when it's found. But um tell me about uh tell me about It's not that smart, but I understand. Also, I do love the idea of somebody finding their landlord's car keys and just keeping it to just randomly set off in the middle of the night. That's very funny. That is very funny. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> sure. I I think that's pretty funny. I mean, like, I obviously he's lying about that, but like, if that was a real thing, that'd be amazing. About the morning, and what time did you wake up? Um, probably like ten twenty-five, because Anna had to be at work at ten forty, so she woke me up to get up and watch the baby, and then Anna woke you up. Yes. Okay. No. Uh, I got up, I was upstairs, was, made her breakfast. We were watching Barney. She had some cookies and stuff like that. Nothing too big. I got her to lay down for a nap. Figured I'd take a nap too. He gave his like, kid cookies for days, breakfast? Aurora. Aurora. How do you spell it? A-U. Huh? O-R-A. A-U what? Excuse me? Where's the second R? A-U-O-R-A? Aura, like Jojo? <laughs> Surely he said it wrong, right? He said Aurora, and then he said, can you spell that? And it was A-U-O-R-A. That's what he said. A-U what? O-R-A. A-U-O-R-A. How old is Aurora? Uh, a year and five months, a year and six months. All right, guys. I think, I think we're going to have to pause white people real quick because I, I i don't even know what's going on anymore like what the fuck is that like what the fuck is that that's not even like interesting that's just leaving out one letter to be different that's so annoying every single time that child's gonna say their name everybody's gonna spell it like it's normally spelled 
and she's gonna have to correct it every single time. Every single time. You know how fucking obnoxious I imagine that's gonna be? I would hate to be this child. Like, what are people doing? Why would you do this to your child? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why do people do this shit? That's, that's insane. That's so wild to me. I don't understand. This poor child has such a, honestly, like Aurora is not a bad name. I'm not, I'm not like against the name. I'm against like the purposeful removal of one of the important letters in terms of its pronunciation and then just pronouncing it the same way anyway. I hate this. I hate, I hate it. Whenever I have children, like they are having like, I mean, I don't even, I, I have no idea what their names are going to be, but like their names are going to be like how they've been spelled. Like, I'm not going to like put some weird quirky shit into it. So like, I feel like my child is special. My child's just going to be my child and I'm going to take care of it. And they're going to be a normal person because they're not going to have a weird fucking name that they have to spend their entire life correcting people on. It's fucking insane. Sorry, name really them bad. Jim and Jimmer. <laughs> Um, yeah, we had two twins, so we gave my twin a regular name, and then to, to rhyme with the other twin, we gave him a weird name. And I'm sure the other twin with the weird name's not going to take that personally for his entire life. <laughs> and I had to go to work. And it worked. She worked at 11. Um, I think it was like 1040. It might, it might be off by like 10 minutes. Hehehe. <laughs> no, Would you tell me when she Where left or... When she left. 10.40? Yeah. Okay, so she probably had to work at 11, fair enough? Probably. Okay. Okay, and uh, who else is in the home at that time? Uh, oh, God. I brought the dog up because the other day... Yeah, uh, these are my twins, Xavier and, and Blavier. <laughs> Do you want to guess which one's going to be upset with me for the rest of their life? <laughs> someone tried to get in the house, so I felt better with him being up there. He, like, follows... Both, yeah, exactly. Follows the baby around. So I feel better like when she's in the house when he's around. I imagine yeah. being a twin already yeah, feels there, like a little and, uh, the other dog was in the like you have to share everything and then your parents are like, Let's go, similar names! <laughs> so That's the basement door. Okay. And no one was there for the longest time. It was just me, and then I think around around one Mel came home. I don't know the exact time. She didn't tell me she was coming home, she just kinda of showed up. And she walked in. Flick and dick. We were going to see my mom. She helped pay for the wedding. <laughs> nah, that's something else, money, man. And my card wasn't going through. So she gave me some money, but then I was late, so they ended up going up there to pay for it. <laughs> Flick and we dick. We were all going to for dinner later that night. I was going to go pick my mom up. Oh, shut up, work. dude. I was going to be like, hey. There's so much rambling already. At Applebee's. There's going to be this nice little thing. Well, Mel said she didn't want to do that. She just wanted me to go grab the money and everything. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do that when Mom gets home. So I left. No, I didn't leave. I'm skipping ahead. I'm sorry. I'm really fucking tired. God, it's almost like he's making it up. So where, where, where was I? Well, I mean, you're at, you're at home. Mel came home at 1, so we're at 1 o'clock. And then what the plan was... Exactly. That's fine. No, that's okay. The, the plan was to meet for dinner, but Mel didn't want to do that. And she asked you to go get... She asked you to meet your mom? Go grab the money. My mom used to teach twins named 7 and 11. That's fuck it. You're joking. That's literally got to be a joke, right? There's literally no way that's real. I refuse. What, what, what state is this in? Don't, obviously don't dox yourself, but like what, what state are you in? Did nobody stop your parents from, or their, their parents from doing that? I'm so curious. What? Canada? You guys are so quick to judge. <laughs> I don't want to hear any Canadians talking any shit on us ever again. <laughs> I, I need to go grab like 600 bucks for my mom. Permanently! But Mel asked you to do that. She asked me to go do that. Wow. And I said I'd do it when she got home. And she said okay. And that wasn't an issue. That was the end of the conversation. Okay, 600 bucks for mom. Okay. And then... Uh, Why is everybody saying Alberta shit? Is Alberta like Ohio? Is Alberta the butt of a joke in Canada? Is it like the can, can, Canadian Ohio? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Texas of Canada. That's funny. <laughs> you just told her after work. And her excuse. Yeah. I told I'm her learning. Her. Okay. Where does your mom work? Like, she works at a bank downtown. New Canada she's lore. Like, she's like in the big vault thing or whatever. But, um, I'm sorry. Where was I? I'm, I'm well, 
I'm really tired. It's, it's still one o'clock. Um, I'm supposed to meet for dinner, um, but she said she, would, she said she had to do something. She wouldn't elaborate, which I, you know, I'm not going to press. It's not my business. So I was like, okay, whatever. Okay, but kind of, convenient. She couldn't. Okay, so she left. Wonder when the shoe's gonna drop. I'm very curious. So, um, I'm just really tired know, after committing a murder and trying to get away with it, man. So I walked out. Give me some slack. 256, 257, and the bus is already there. Fine. Because sometimes they come really early and they call and bitch that I'm not outside. Okay. So I try to like walk out a little bit earlier, but then every time I plan on doing it, they're always early. Okay. So you get him. You guys walk back inside. Oh, that's real tough, uh, buddy. I was still outside. We were chilling outside. It was raining, but he didn't want to go inside. So he's kind of like running around the cars and stuff. Okay. And right when I was finally getting him, like, to go inside, Mel pulled in. Yeah, he has a loading like, shirt on. I wish the police camera would, would do that. What time? How long were you guys outside before Mel came home? Nah, no more than five minutes, if that. Okay, so she came up shortly after three. Yeah. Jeffrey is now about to explain his alibi. Uh -huh. He claims that Melinda's son Kyle is dropped off every day at 3 p.m. Uh -huh. Yet even though he is unemployed, he struggles to make sure he is outside on time to get him off the bus. Very responsible. After Kyle is dropped off, Melinda pulls into the driveway and Jeffrey goes inside to get his own child and leave to go to his aunt's. The problem is, what? there is a time gap between when Jeffrey left what and when he dynamic? arrived at his aunt's. Let's see how Jeffrey explains his alibi. Gee, I wonder what the I gap is. I wonder what the gap is. Uh, what the gap? What What do you guys think he did between the the gap? What do you um? What do you What do you guys think he did? It's with um. What do you think he did while the during the the gap in his alibi? What do you? My aunt he hugged his I child. I, I gave the one officer her information and everything so he could call and ask if he need to. But I was going there. I help with her lawn and her house and stuff. She can't do stuff like that. I bet I was he was being a really responsible father. Put up. She bought these lantern things. Like for the side of houses. Like my oh, head. fuck. It was <laughs> I've shit there, myself. Right? <laughs> what, time, what time did you, uh, what time did you leave then? <laughs> so, like... Right after, I just walked in, and grabbed the baby. So as soon as Mel came home, you left right away. Literally, right away. I'm five. And sorry. I didn't notice with the truck. The light popped I'm on. literally twelve. For the gas, so I'm driving down Prospect and lost. <laughs> like you know, it stalled out. I pulled to the side of the road a little bit, turned on my hazards. I was. <laughs> I should not be laughing that hard. <laughs> I just love the idea of a dude like ultra oblivious just saying everything he thinks out loud and then <laughs> feeling the need to share that as well. It's just really getting to me. I don't know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> in view, no, oh, no. damn it. Drake, the one going through. I'm sorry. Mom! Are, you gonna, you're, you're head, are you heading? I'm heading towards Prospect. I think that's Drake, right? Okay, so you're heading across Drake. I could see Gecko, but I had the baby and it was pouring rain, so I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Okay. Um, you were going to your aunt. I'm sorry, what was her name? Aunt Jeannie's. Oh, she went good. Uh, you ran a gas on uh, Drake Road. Did you know where at on Drake? Um, within view of Gecko? Like maybe two or three. You're your truck. Yeah. Right. I was pulled aside road. I had hazards. You were by Gecko? Yeah. I had my two gas tanks in the back, but they were empty. Mm hmm What kind of, uh, how big are those? Like oh, shit, an ad played. Sorry. I was too busy laughing to notice. I really am, like, my best fan. Laugh at my own fucking shit. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I think I've poo-pooed myself again. <laughs> Do you have to change your diaper now, Billy? Yeah. <laughs> It's a big one, too. On uh, Drake Road, did you know where at on Drake? Um, within view of Gecko? Like maybe two or three. You're your truck. Yeah. Right. I was pulled aside the road. I had hazards. You were by Gecko? Yeah. I had my two gas tanks. Oh, jeez. What kind of, uh, how big are those? Like five gallon gas tanks? Two, five it appears gallons. I've they're, shit they're, myself. Go over, but, uh. The, there was a nice man who stopped. I was gonna. I pulled out an umbrella, this little umbrella. I was gonna walk with the baby carriage in the 
thing. Like, Stinky I dog. couldn't find my phone. I didn't know where it was. Dog. But uh, I was I was gonna walk. The plan was, but someone stopped and asked if I needed help, and I gave him ten dollars. And he went and filled the gas can up and brought it back. He was very nice. Okay, so you, you were near Gecko within walking distance, huh? Wait, what? The plan was, but I couldn't find my phone. I didn't know where it was. But uh, I was I was gonna walk. The plan was, but someone stopped and asked if I needed help. And I gave him ten dollars, and he went and filled the gas can up and brought it back. He was very nice. Okay, so you, you were near Gecko within walking distance, huh? Well, no, I w I could see it. Is what I'm saying. I was okay. in a view. Okay. Not like walking distance. Walking okay. distance. I could see like the corner of the sign. Okay. Um. So somebody gave him ten bucks. He filled them up. Yeah. And then so his alibi is involving a person that he doesn't that doesn't exist. Which is automatically going to make it harder because he's not going to be able to pull that person in to be like, yeah, I did that. So that's pretty smart. And then right after, right after that. I'm starting to think this guy's a fucking like, genius. You didn't, offer, you didn't go with him? No, I hit the baby. No, nah, he wasn't, he didn't drive the truck, Chad. He drove the uh, other car. He said that already. So, Boomer's being very needy right now. Uh, what is it? I, I didn't want to get a stranger's car. What is it, Boomer? Okay, so he fills him up. I figure worst case is he steals my gas tank and ten dollars. Case, you silly man. I, mean, he I think like my dog's really nice gonna go run around. Red Lincoln pulls up and asks if I was okay. <sighs> but I called my dad right after that and let him know I was on the way to cheese. I got there, she was waiting for me. Yeah, you'll notice with a lot of criminals when they actually do stuff and they're asked to like explain where they were at the time of the murder, they'll they'll do shit like this where they'll just like say everything that's not relevant at all. They'll, they'll say everything. They'll just say everything under the sun in order to like explain where they were because they don't know how to tell a genuine truth off the top of their head because they're lying. So they just over explain and ramble about the most nonsensical shit ever. It's so it's so clever and definitely not suspicious at all. Trust me. I'm sure the police aren't at all freaking out. Uh, I'm going to let my dogs out, but don't worry. I'll just let the video play. I mean, it's a long one, so I'm not going to miss much. I was late because I had to stop. Gas and stuff. Did he fill up both those cans? No, he only he only filled up one. He only put ten bucks in one. There's still gas in it. I stopped and put six bucks in. That's all I had. Into your, right into your car. Right into my car, just to get me there and there. And then I kept the gas. Did you pay the cash? Uh, yeah. I might have the receipt in the truck. I probably threw it down. I really okay. gotta keep it receipt. Okay. Actually, you know what? I might have it in here. Okay. You, did you put that, um, what he, you just I filled up, you didn't put the whole, um, gas can in? No, because I was, the, the things that guzzler, I was afraid I was going to lose gas again. I figured six bucks would be able to get me there and back. Okay. So I can get more money. Okay. Okay, and then you go to your uh, your aunt's yes. on Abigail? On Abigail Lane. Is uh, anybody home? Yeah, Jeannie was there. Okay, do you know what time you get there now? How long does all this take? Mm -hmm. You left shortly after 3. What time do you think you got to her house? Probably 4.30. That's a long time. I was stuck there for whatever. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't find my phone. Jeffrey makes sure to add as many details as possible to his story. As most of you know, liars like to tell elaborate stories because they believe that more details will make the story more believable. The problem is, Jeffrey says that he could not find his phone, which is why he was stuck for over an hour. But he also says that he called his father using the same phone he could not find. three-ish probably a little bit before a little bit after I'm not sure I got there I was talking to her for a while okay let me let me uh, just backtrack a little bit right. um, what do you mean you couldn't find your phone I couldn't find it for the longest time it fell if you look at the truck I don't know if you took a good look the two seats, the way they come together, they go like this, mm -hmm. and then in the center where the seatbelts are, there's a big hole. Mm -hmm. And when shit goes down there, you have to go in the back seat to get it. Mm -hmm. 
And so my phone slid down there and behind. So I, when I stopped and got the gas, I had to open the door, mm -hmm. reach back there and grab my phone. Okay. So you, you get to your aunt's 4.30, give or take? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what do you do there? Uh, it was raining, so I couldn't cut anything or do anything. So I kind of just talked to her. I cut up some... What were you supposed to cut? Uh, she wanted me to cut down some shrubs and stuff, and then I wanted to rake all the leaves for her, because she's got all these big pine trees and everything behind her. Okay. She's got big pine trees and a couple oak trees. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I was supposed to also... She wanted me to put up like uh, like lighting lanterns or whatever on the side of her house. She wanted me to replace them. She bought four new ones to replace the four ones she had. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, do you? Uh, how long do you stay there? I think about an hour, if not more. I can't tell you. And then. You think you're there for an hour? Probably a little bit more. I called my dad when I left. I could. If you look at my phone, it'll tell you what time I was leaving, the exact time. And then I went from there. Was that what you, nobody else was there? Just you and her? Just me and her, and her dog, and the baby. I spoke to Anna a couple times on the phone, I spoke to my dad on the phone while I was there, and then I called him after I left as well. And then I texted Anna that I was on my way when I was pulling out of the driveway as well. And then I also texted her here when I got to Applebee's. Okay, and then from there, where did you go from your aunt's house? To Applebee's. We went straight to Applebee's. We were all supposed to meet there originally, but Anna told Bruce to go there, and she told me to go there. Because either way, we needed to go get keys from her, because we couldn't get, well, I couldn't get in the house at least. And whose idea was it to go to Applebee's? Anna's, for us to meet there. Who's us? Uh, me and Bruce. Because he was at the wreck. I think he was just going to go home afterwards, but she said to everyone go up to Applebee's. She was expecting us to go up there originally. And who, who told Bruce to go there? Anna. And how did she do that? Did she call him, text I, him? I don't know. She probably texted or called him. You'd have to ask her that, or ask him. Okay. Did you call Bruce at all, or did he call you? Uh, yeah, we spoke a few times when I was trying to figure out where Mel was. Because I tried to get back in the house to change and take a shower, because I was kind of stinky. We were all trying to get a hold of Mel, so we all, like, crisscrossed, called each other, trying to figure out where she was. So you guys were calling each other, you and Bruce? Yeah, I called him a few times. He called me once saying that he was at the wreck, because I asked where he was, so I thought they would be together. But, and then Anna called him a few times, she called me a few times, I think. We were all just calling each other, trying to figure out what's going on. Just so we can understand how much of a monster Jeffrey really is, I will explain what really happened. After Melinda arrived home, Jeffrey used a military-grade knife to attack her with, and after she was down, he used a handgun to finish what he had started. After he was done, he would leave Kyle in the home by himself and drive to his aunt's house. He would then go out to dinner with the rest of his family, and when Melinda never arrived, he would help the family try to get a hold of her. Okay, and you wait for Bruce to get there, and then what, what kind of conversation? I come back and you guys are freaking out. I must have missed something really dramatic. And how the wreck, because I asked where he was. I thought they would be together. Recap, he bought six bucks of gas, went to his aunt's house, too many details, said he couldn't find his phone, the one he used to call his dad. Because he's a big moron, went to Applebee's, saw Bruce, all lies, all he, he went to his aunt's and used a knife and a handgun. He did go to Applebee's, though. <sighs> Recap, I let my dogs out and I got a string cheese. We are all just calling each other, trying to figure out what's going on. Just so we can understand how much of a monster Jeffrey really is, I will explain what really happened. After Melinda arrived home, Jeffrey used a military-grade knife to attack her with, and after she was down, 
he used a handgun to finish what he had started. After he was done, he would leave Kyle in the home by himself and drive to his aunt's house. Wow. He would then go out to dinner with the rest of his family. And wow. when Melinda never arrived, he would help the family try to get a hold of her. Left the child there? Okay. And you wait for Bruce to get there, and then what kind of conversation? Does Bruce come in with anything? Uh, that little bag he carries around with him. Also, it's kind of weird to, like, start with the knife and then use the gun. Maybe because it's more of a crime of passion, then. Because he probably has some animosity towards them and wanted them to actually suffer. But I also feel like the smart, like, well, not the smartest, but I feel like you would use the gun to, like, debilitate them, and then you would use the knife. Kind of weird he did it in the opposite order. I guess there's not really, like, a formula. And it is a dude just, like, killing somebody, so it's not exactly a smart thing in the first place, but whatever. What color is that? Uh, I think it's green and black. It's like a little, little duffel bag, like one of those little gym bags. The cheap ones you see at uh, Dollar Tree. <coughs> okay. And... Oh, I swallowed wa water Where's weird. Uh, I'm regressing. He asked if I talked to Mel. Like, <laughs> you talked to Mel. We were all trying to figure out what's going on. Anna walked over. We were all talking like, when was the last time we talked to her? When was the last time we do this? He uh, Kyle's a different child, she guys. The one in kettle. five months was Aur Aurora spelled weird or whatever. And he's like, I went and Kyle is the Kyle woman he bit. killed Kyle's kid or accents. something. How he's buying underwear or whatever for Kyle. <laughs> Something like that. And and then, then we I guess they could be similar in age, there. regardless. But yeah. Just talked about Azadan stuff. This guy's kid is the Aurora one. Kyle is the person he killed's kid, I believe, or his fiance's kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. You're right. That is what it was. We're talking about uh, how his tire. I don't know if he told you. Someone put. Kyle is fiance's kid, Aurora is his kid, and he killed his fiance's mom. They all live in the same house with like the entire family. This guy's an idiot. That's all you gotta really know. Two nails in his tire. Holy. Mm -hmm. Like right next to each other that aren't attached nails, so you know somebody did it. We were talking about it because they were away all weekend and I wasn't paying attention to the cars, but the, his tire was flat when he came back in the car and it moved. Mm -hmm. So someone like walked up and you know, put the nails in. We were talking about that. He keeps on blaming uh, Mark something. I love that he... One of their old friends, the guy they call Spaz. I've only met him a handful of times. I don't know his full name. I love that he's just he really... He's with him and all that stuff. And emphasizing that the car is getting messed and, with. Well, the attempt to break in thing. And all that stuff. Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just talking, like, trying to speculate what was going on. We were all blaming a different neighbor and stuff like that. Totally not giving Olympics. you this information, so you try to look into it instead of looking Olympics, into me. Whatever. Like, I think it's the girl next door, Laura, her son. Definitely not giving you this information to give you a list of suspects to look at. A, that's not me. Spaz. Smile. And Anna thinks it's the guy, the other guy next door. Okay. Jeffrey begins talking about the multiple burglaries that have occurred at his home. Over the past several months, the police have been notified multiple times about the break-ins and police reports had been taken. What they don't know is that all of the break-ins had been staged by Jeffrey, who was stealing from his family. He would take what he wanted, then create his very own crime scenes to make it look like he was also a victim. He would then manipulate the family and the wow. police into believing that somebody else was breaking into the home Whoa. on a regular basis. And how long are you guys at Applebee's? Whoa. Uh. Wow, this guy's a piece know. of shit. Been there a little bit. Wow. <sighs> There's so many layers I, I to how much of garbage late. this guy is. I don't really know. I, I couldn't tell you. I'm sorry. I couldn't tell you. Maybe. No, nah, I don't think a full hour. Maybe. What would he even be doing with that? Where would he hour. take it? Okay. And would he just hoard it in his you room? Guys leave Applebee's together? Yeah. I'm confused. We left. Uh, he walked out to the car with me. I had to walk out to the car with me. I poured some more. The real question is: was 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 all the breakups, breakups, break-ins? Were the break-ins all an elaborate scheme to get to this point, or did he decide it was a good way to to throw blame somewhere? <laughs> Answer now. Put your thoughts in the comments below. Who? <laughs> yes, in my car. I'm assuming Just convenience. Again, I'm assuming he was doing it for like money because he mentioned not having a job. But, yeah. And then, 
put the gas tank in. He drove off before me. Make sure you absolutely poop all over the like button turned, while you're commenting. And backwards. hit the bell. <laughs> in the car. Sorry, the car drove. Came up behind him. <laughs> the I guess a long turn when I was <laughs> How did you guys exit Applebee's? Uh, I didn't go through the mall. I think he went a different way because he wasn't in front of me or behind me. So cool, bro. You know when you go uh, past Coles? Right next to it. I yeah, make sure to like the stream, right guys. On the other entrance and just turn and hug them all. Anybody watching the stream, uh, if you want to like the stream, make sure you go near the follow button and hit that bell. And uh, make sure it says stream notifications on. That's how you like the stream, okay? All the way to the... Well, just making sure, guys. When you... I know it doesn't sorry, say it like, but that, that's how you do it. I... Twitch told me that's how you do it. That no, the one after that. The one that's just where you go right. You get a right turn and you can skip the like. It should say off. When you hover it, it should say off. Yeah, what you said. It should. Yeah. Yeah, ignore. Yeah, actually, turn your stream notice off, guys. Turn them off. Don't watch me. I don't even know how to sell okay. out properly, uh, apparently. I do an ad I do an ad for my gaming oh, org and the entirety of Twitch crashes before my eyes, so. I didn't notice it until we turned right on Golden Star. Where's the dislike button? The dislike button's actually the, the button that says subscribe. Uh, it's actually just subscribe. It's dislike in a different language. If you hit subscribe and, and enter your bank information, you know, pay $5 a month, it'll actually like, uh, you'll actually like punish me in the algorithm. <laughs> Yeah, the stream notice thing, if you're hovering it, hold on, let me, now I'm, you guys are freaking me out now. Now I'm like, truly I have Ranboos notice on. If I were to like, uh, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I had him on the whole time, guys, don't worry. Make sure this bell is highlighted, like just filled in. That's how you like the stream, guys. Not his, not his stream, my stream though, not, not Rand's, mine, my stream. Because when I turned right onto Golden Star, he was turning right down Blazing Star. And there was a lady in front of me, so I stopped. She went. I guess you can I do stopped. his stream too, though. Right. Mostly mine, though. Do mine. When I pulled in the driveway, he was already waiting by the door. Okay. Was he drawing a penis? Oh, I wasn't even watching the stream. Oh, we tried the keys. <laughs> was he actually? We talked for a minute by. That's really like, funny. That's car. She's here. He's like, oh, she's being dumb or whatever. He said, like, a few other things. That's funny. You know, he's getting pissed because he thought she blew him off or whatever. And then we tried the one key, it didn't work. We tried the other key, it didn't work. And we're like, well, what the hell are we going to do now? Oh, my God, that's we too many knocking, keys not knocking, working. Knocking, what do we do, guys? Nothing. Like, five minutes go by. Or Son of a bitch. I the like, 12 times in a row just to say someone's sleeping just to wake him up. And Kyle came and opened the door. And, you know, it seems everything was normal. Kyle opened the door. You know, Kyle opened the door. The lights were all on. Nothing seemed out of place. Just looking in. I reached in, put this, the baby to the right like I always this do. This child opened the, the door? Open, so I always put her to the right. And I went back out, grabbed her bag, grabbed my phone, the wallet, and I walked in. So how And then how old is this kid? Back, like, about to run the garage. Bruce started screaming about something. I ran in. Kyle picked up the baby and moved her in the living room, threw him the TV where the couch was, the L couch. Um, you put him in there, so I walked in and ran over so to the baby. So you put the baby right in the foyer right there, to the right, by the stairs? Yeah, right where the base of the stairs was. Baby and in the foyer, what the will he do? He does this all the time. He picks her up and he puts her in the other room because that's where everyone hangs out. You picked him up right in there. I thought something was wrong with the baby, so I ran well, in. You went outside to get the diaper bag and do what else? To be four. To, to be four. <laughs> To be fair, my nephew is like not even two and he he knows how to open doors. So like my my brother-in-law had to completely put like he, he had to change. <laughs> he didn't get like the child proof like grips. He made it to where his handles had to go up instead of down <laughs> because his child's not tall enough to do that, <laughs> which is really funny. Honestly, it's kind of a genius way to deal with it. So I don't know. I think I thought that was really funny. <laughs> oh my keys and wallet i left them on the seat because i didn't know if we were gonna get in the yeah house. he just flipped his He's locks around right on the so his his doors were the opposite way yeah and i didn't want to leave the baby there because she was awake so she would have started screaming if we left away and then you heard him uh you heard bruce what did bruce scream i don't know what he screamed at first i just kind of heard him yell so i ran in and i thought something was wrong with the baby 
didn't see her at the door, was yelling, where's the baby, where's the baby? Look, ran into the kitchen, saw her to the right, ran over there, looked at her. Where's the baby, where's the baby? Boop, 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 boop. He was where's the baby, the where's the baby? I thought something was wrong, I turned around. And... Wait, so whoever Kyle is was in the house when this happened and is somehow coherent enough to know how to open and stuff? I'm, a, I'm having a hard time conceptualizing the age of Kyle and lift a baby, true. Kyle is school age, but he said Kyle needed diapers? He is around 32. <laughs> Very cool. You know what, dude? Kyle might just be pissing. Why not? No, it doesn't matter. So you, it doesn't you, matter. You went to the right for the baby? You didn't look? Well, you said? I looked, but I didn't see. You know, I just looked for the little carrier because I was afraid something was wrong with her. Where's Bruce standing when, when you come in the house? Uh, right above her head, like to the right. Like if you're, if this is the pantry door, you was standing like this. This is the, uh, this is the best. This is one of the greatest tells of all time when a suspect is attempting to give the detective visualization because this isn't like, this isn't him selling it to him. This is him selling the lie to himself at the moment. You'll see this a lot. And I'm not saying it's a foolproof tell, but a ton of suspects when they're like trying to explain what happened when they walked in on the scene or like their alibi or whatever, stuff like that. They'll do shit like this or they'll give like very intense visualization or they'll like do these like these like, well, imagine if this is that whatever, you know, they'll do like these like big grand like imagine this situations to really try to sell that piece of information to somebody. It's pretty great. You'll see it happen a weird amount. Similar to uh, suspects being named after their ancestors to an extent, extensive amount, as in Junior here. I didn't even realize she was there at first. Did you actually go into the living room? Trying to convince yes, the police officer room, he didn't know he was going to be there, even face. though he totally did. I thought something was wrong. And then I turned around and saw her in there, and then he started screaming, she's bleeding, she's bleeding, she's bleeding. <sighs> Yo, oh, like, thanks for the madrinas. And I reached down and I touched her leg to see if, you know, if she was a white guy. Like shook her leg. I feel like it's the worst spot to try that she at, but okay. Yeah, like uh, right where her head is, her head was. I feel like that's got to be the weirdest spot to help I wake up somebody or check move. a pulse. Uh, he's he's yelling, she's bleeding. He's bleeding. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. She's bleeding. Then he ran past me into the front room and he started digging in his bags, looking for his phone. And he yelled, he can't find his phone, he can't find his phone. And then he ran. Quick, wave their, waggle their elbow. I heard that's what gets them to wake immediately. <laughs> Hello? Back over and like did something to her. He was looking, touching her. Oh, Kyle has Down syndrome apparently. Oh, okay. I guess that explains a bit. Or moved her or something. Like, yeah, I think he just touched her back and realized she was bleeding from from all over her back or whatever. Mm. I pulled out my phone Damn, and started dude. calling, and then he, he yelled, she isn't breathing. And he just left that Kyle kid out. there? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. He has a kid that, like, has needs and, like, kills somebody and just left him with it. And this this per th this kid is clearly functional enough to move around and, and walk around, right? If he's, like, school age, he's old enough to, like, perceive... You know what I mean? So he like basically left his kid there to be a witness or to like be the first on the scene. That's fucked up. This guy is fucked. I hate this guy. This is this is an evil ass dude. I don't know, man. It's it like I, I love to imagine there's good in most people, but it's really hard when people like this exist. You know what I mean? It's really hard. I mean, just like the the amount of evil, the amount of just awful things you the, the amount of collateral damage to his entire family in this situation yeah his grandma literally his grandma it, th that's gross dude i mean that's that's just awful i don't even know man i don't even know what to say about that that shit's crazy i hate it walked out kyle didn't want to go out i kind of dragged him out by his neck i wasn't trying to hurt him but by his neck good lord bro just pick your kid up. I, I think he called as well, but I'm not sure. Were you outside when you called him one? Yes, I ran straight out to the truck. It was like, rain. Was, was he the Undertaker? He's gonna choke slam his, his kid? What the fuck? 
uh, when I was on the phone with 911, I turned on the lights and looked to see if Kyle was bleeding or anything because the lady asked me. And Bruce went to his bags to try to find his phone? He was looking through his bags. And then he came out, he was on the phone. I think he was on the phone with 911. He was yelling into the phone, so I don't know. I was trying to answer the lady's questions. There is absolutely no way this guy is not in jail for an extremely long time. Given the circumstances of this crime and then like clearly the police are aware of like him staging all these burglaries and stuff like that. I After talking about the crime scene, the conversation moves to the guns in the home and the ones in their vehicles. Jeffrey becomes very anxious as he does his best to explain why one of the handguns had been fired recently. Oh yeah. Uh would you happen to yeah, have gunpowder on your hands, so Jeffrey? So let me, let's just back up so I understand this clearly. We'll go slow because there's been a lot of cars out there. And so okay. on Saturday, yes, you guys are planning on going. They were they were going to see. Let me start again. Saturday, Ellie's in the car. Ellie's. I'm going to pick up Ellie. I stop at the hospital to say hi to my dad. I haven't seen him since he's been in the hospital. This guy is His an truck asshole. Is in the parking lot. So true. He said that there was a gun in there and that I can go grab some money. My mother walked out there with me. So true. She grabbed the money out of the bag and gave me some money for Ellie's ticket. I cleared the weapon that was in his car so that there was nothing in the chamber or anything like that. He's licensed to carry it. He's a concealed carry weapon. Okay. I ejected the magazine. And your mom summary command? That. Yeah, man. Yes, and I okay. put it in the back seat of the car, like all the way Swag. in the back, you know, where you open up the window. I could probably it put it in the command or in the title of whenever we do these, up, but. But I went in my car, drove, picked up Ellie, went to Rite Aid, bought her ticket. There's a few other mods here. And then we went back to the house and they went to Cedar Point. Her sister, like my sister, and a sister, her, and some Sandra. One of their friends. Thank you, um, Bog. So the last time you physically touched a gun... There was an was error. Fired. The man doesn't right. exist. Yes. Okay. But I don't know when the last time he fired that weapon was. That's what I was worried about. The command might have gotten removed. Just do add, add comments, see if showered. it happens. Yes. I think I showered that day. I don't know if I showered. There you go. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just whatever say. mod did the... Use made the summary last might have removed it when it was done you showered yes okay which and actually that makes sense you wash your hands have to use the restroom yes am i in trouble no i just am i in trouble you know you're, you're no you're asking me you know you're worried about it but um you know if the last time you touched a gun was chat why did the police officer ask if he washed his hands was it a to make sure he wasn't a stinky bitch two to test the germs on his hands to see if they like guns? Or was it three to make sh to see if he still had gunshot residue on his hands? Stinky bitch. <laughs> it's gotta be the stinky bitch one. <laughs> 40 hours ago at the least, you've showered, you've washed your I've hands. watched every crime time. I you think know. that's the one. So you should so worry about. All right. Oh, I think I was worried. I didn't know how long that stuff stayed on. Jeffrey lets out Quite a sigh of relief. He had been worried that he may look guilty for something he did not do. Uh -huh. The problem is, Jeffrey is about to make a big mistake. Ooh. He has shown concern that gunpowder residue may be on his hands. Yet he doesn't remember oh, well. if he is supposed to know that Melinda was shot. His story is that after taking a quick look at the body, he left the home and he hasn't returned. And while he was on Nobody the phone said with 911, getting shot. Bruce only mentioned the knife wounds. Nobody mentioned getting shot, you silly asshole. But was she shot? You said that... It's too late, her, Jeffrey. You've already made the mistake. No, I'm sorry. She was shot and stabbed. Shot and stabbed? Yeah, and stabbed. Um, Jeff, let's go back to... When your car breaks down... The shoe's dropping! It's an awfully long time to be on Drake Road for an hour and a half. Here comes so the shoe. Was, he, was it there for an hour? The shoe is in the air, chat. I was there less than that. But I was just, you know how when you pull the side of the road a little bit? No. And there's the ditch. I was just outside the ditch. I Guilty. had hazard lights on. It was when the pouring rain started. I was just, like, I could see that. They did ask about the, the gun? Station, not the necessarily. The they did ask about the gun, but it's not necessarily 
they weren't like there was gunshots. Can you explain? Like they didn't say that they were shot. They just asked about the guns in their house, which they could explain. I mean, you could use it as a way you could say something like, well, we don't know if this is a break in yet. We don't know the motive of this crime. So we want to make sure that those guns are accounted for in case the person actually took them because then that's somebody with a gun that's not theirs. So you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to conclude that person got shot. They didn't ask who shot the gun. They didn't say that that person got shot yet. They just asked about the guns, which could, you know, you could lead that in any direction as a police officer in the interrogation. So. But you're there, you're there for an hour. Hey, you, you said you were there for an hour and a half. It's more that his so, alibi is dog really shit, though. Time, and then, then you tell me you can't find your phone. I didn't have my phone. I didn't know where it was. So you said you couldn't find it. I know, but I'm, I'm saying okay. like I didn't physically have it. Okay, okay. but you could get it. You just got to go to the back, you said, and, and grab it. Yeah, but I didn't know if I left it at the house or what. Like, I was looking, and then when I finally, like, when the nice man got me some gas, and I got to the gas station, I sat, sat down, looked, you know, looked in the car, looked everywhere, opened the back door, Reach back, look through all that. How long were you sitting there before that? Yeah, that's the amount of effort I look in to find the one thing that I use 24 7. 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. I gave it a good one over and give up. 20, 30 minutes, did you want to go see if you left your phone at the house or go to check the car? I didn't have gas. If only there was ways to track a phone's location. In that 20 or 30 or minutes, like if I lost my phone, car, if only there was a way to like alert where my phone is. Gulp. But even describing those seats, knowing that it drops down. I guess he doesn't have an Apple Watch though, so. It would be pretty. Wow, I mean, broke. <laughs> Jeffrey is getting noticeably frustrated yeah, I wonder because why. he knows his story is falling apart. Earlier in the interrogation, he described in great detail where he found his phone, as if he had found it there multiple times before. If he was sitting in his vehicle for 30 minutes, why didn't he look in a place where he had found it many times before? How do you lose your phone for 30 minutes in the, in, in the car? That's just an impossible alibi. I was just looking around for the phone. I just didn't I mean, see it. Especially now that you have... You have help, and then you look for your phone. Uh, just seems like an awfully long time to be sitting there in Drake Road. Um, there's a big gap in time. Get a lawyer, get a lawyer, get a lawyer. Um, I didn't want to hop out of the car. Uh, and I didn't want to walk out and try and walk to the gas station holding gas This is the funniest part, bro. That's what was my prediction. Criminals are too... I understand not getting dumb not to just clam car, up the baby and if it's raining, but um, I think anybody would first look for their phone to see if they call for some help. That's why I was looking, but like I said, you social psychology is fascinating, man. Didn't feel safe to do that. I didn't feel safe to do it. You can you can see him realizing he's being questioned for it now. You can you we literally heard, heard the wheels turning in his hamster wheel ass brain of being like, oh shit, this is like you know. Clearly, he's asking about specifically where he was during the crime for a reason. So I need to make sure this is a good excuse. But now he's realizing his excuse makes no fucking sense. And you think this would be the point where he's like, I want a lawyer. Nope. Jeffrey's smart. He's been manipulating his family for years. Surely he can get he can get away with murder, especially by talking to the police. That definitely will help him get away with it. Because the police are really, really good at not using information well, especially during a case. Smile. And I, there's a good possibility I left the phone at home is what I was thinking. But what made you feel safe 20, 30 minutes later? I what? pulled up into the get-go. After I got some gas, I pulled up into the get-go. Hey, but you just told me that you found it while he was getting you gas. Yeah, he got me gas and I pulled up into the get-go. I said I put $6 in the tank. That's when I opened up the car and looked and found the phone. And then I called Jeannie, or I might have texted Jeannie or called Jeannie that I was on the way. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining things right. I'm very tired. Yep, that's why. Jeff, how did you get the scratches on your face? I had a little bumper with the truck. I got tapped. That's from me hitting the steering wheel. You can ask Anna and her mother about 
and our Father and whoever else. What did you get at car accident? The, the blunt object gave you scratches on your face? This guy is so fucking smart. Yeah, also he said ask her and her mother, the girl, the, the woman he killed. <laughs> How are they gonna ask her? Officer Daniels, get the Ouija board out. We've got some interrogation to do. <laughs> he said to ask the mother. We're gonna get to the bottom of these scratches on his face. Where's that Ouija board? Is it with all the cocaine evidence? I think it is. In the evidence locker? Yeah, let's get let's get that out. Let's get that out real quick. Let's dust that bad boy off. Bring out that spirit box as well. <laughs> It wasn't really a car accident, it was just kind of a bump. Okay. How does a bump give you scratches yesterday. on your face, you dumb bastard? I'm way back from helping Dakota Skinger move. Dakota Sorry. Skinger? Uh, I was helping my buddy move from his house here in Prospect, at the corner of Prospect and Lund. He can account from where I was there. And then on the way back, I got bumped, but just enough to just hit my head. And I've had the scratches since yesterday. You can ask Anna or Bruce about it. Okay. Would you hit your head on the steering wheel? Mm -hmm. It was just enough of a bump. You, was there a police report? No. There was no damage on either of the cars. Convenient. Why don't you... Uh, so you didn't get the name of the person who hit you? Damn. It's just the seam of the, the, seam of the wheel sticks out. And that's what cut me. Oh, yeah. Totally. This side, no. I don't know what that is. This is what hit me. Yeah, what is on this side? Wait, so, <laughs> so let me get this straight. He has what's clearly defensive wounds from his fiance's mother on his face because he started the crime by coming at her with the knife rather than stopping her with the gun to start. So his excuse for it is that he got in such a minor car accident that there's no scratches on either car. He doesn't know the name of the person who hit him and he didn't file a police report and that the ridges of the wheel stick out enough to cause that, which is like... Definitely not that convincing, but like, let's roll with that. Let's say it's convincing enough. And then he goes, yeah, well, that's what, what explains up here. I don't know what this is. The other scratches you're questioning me on that I can't explain. So he just completely ruined his, his entire excuse by being like, yeah, that's only part of the wounds on my face. I can't tell you where these came from. <laughs> Side. So you hit a steering wheel, it's round. So these are going down. They scratch marks. Amazing. I don't think so. It was there last night. It's just from something else. It could be from the Selby unit. But this all was there last night. You can Some, ask Anna. Something else I can't explain. Uh, Smile. And if you need to, I guess you can test my face. Test my face? I don't know if that's an actual thing. I mean, they can test the scratches and realize their their defense wounds. In fact, ooh, what about, ooh, wouldn't it be crazy? Oh, oh no. Surely there's not a way that they could test the nails of the victim to find DNA under their fingernails that might happen to be Jeffrey's. That would be so weird if that was possible. Good thing it's not. Good for Jeffrey. It's definitely not possible. The detective now asks Jeffrey who he thinks took Melinda's life. Now is Jeffrey's chance to try and take the attention off of himself and put it onto someone else. I'm sure he'll absolutely nail it. So who do you think is capable of doing something like this? I don't know. Me smile. I mean, Bruce gets angry and yells at everybody sometimes, but I don't think he would be able to do that. I don't know. I'm gonna s I'm gonna use it I'm gonna suggest him anyway for no reason. Anna and Mel recently found out that the guy next door has guns and was flaunting guns around. The one to the left, I don't know his last name, but his name is Ronnie. Hey. He said something about it when a break in happened to the officer. He said he was like a Pretty detective. Out. Uh I don't know what he is. Blunt, like white hair. Location of the house house to the left. Or other way. Place in the house, the house to the left? Yeah, house to the left. With the red door. Mm -hmm. With the basketball hoop. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they came about that. They told the detective that came by. He had white hair, kind of short. I don't know his name. I have his card. Actually, what? I do have his card. Bruce, Bruce is his future father-in-law, yeah. 
Not this guy, that's the officer. What the fuck? You know what? I might not have his card. There's a picture of his card on my phone, but they told him about it. He said he didn't know his last name. They seem pretty concerned about it. You can call in and ask her about it if you want. Yeah, don't know his name, but the, I have his uh, card. The clothes that you're wearing prior to three, what were they? Uh, sweatpants and a t-shirt and some socks. What Just colors to sleep in? Gray t-shirt. Did he not want to marry her? Pants. Motive's unclear. Also, he yeah, killed his fiance's know, mom, not his fiance. Probably white or black. Those are the only ones I have. And why did you change? Because I was sleeping in those clothes and I didn't want to go out in them. Convenient. And plus, if I'm, if I, I like have, whenever I sleep in clothes, I kind of sleep in them like two or three days in a row. Because, you know, you're just sleeping in them. I don't want to get them dirty by working. What? Do the laundry, bro. <laughs> Man is explaining pajamas. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. I mean, he's just like explaining PJs, but also it's like PJs are such a weird concept to me, man. I've never understood it. I, I guess I get it. Like you have clothes you sleep in because they're comfy, but also like I get hot. I get hot when I sleep because I'm just like a warm. I just have a warm body. Like I don't if I go to sleep with clothes, I just have the clothes I was wearing. Like I usually just don't sleep with clothes because I get sweaty if I do. I hate waking up like moist. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Sorry, bad word to use, but it is the correct word in that situation. Um, in the process of eliminating, you know, the people that were there on the scene, would you take a polygraph test? What's that? Uh, a lie detector test. Um, sure. Sure. Actually, you know what? Wait. I'll talk to my mother about it first, but... I mean, I guess I'd be open to it. I'll talk to my well, mother. Did, I thought those things don't work. They don't. They're very accurate. Huh? No. <laughs> you lying piece of shit. I just going off stuff I saw on TV. Those are very accurate. Oh, they're fucking not. Jeffrey makes yet another mistake when they ask him if he would take a lie detector test. An innocent person would agree to it immediately because they want to do everything not in their true. power to help. Not true. The longer this interrogation plays out, the more anxious and defensive Jeffrey becomes. Not true. Okay. Not every innocent person is going to take a polygraph test. Anybody aware of the inefficiency and non-effectiveness of a polygraph test would say no just due to the fact that there's literally no point other than it's a like it's a pressure tool. It's literally just used as a tool for pressuring suspects in an interrogation room at this point. The police use it to get evidence of lies to use for further questioning. They can't use it as evidence of guilt or anything because it can be easily faked. Innocent people don't just blindly agree to it. I mean, I'm sure some people do, but it's not like every single innocent person out there is going to be like, yeah, absolutely. They're not going to do that. Some might, not everybody. Did you have, do you have any involvement in Mel's death, any any knowledge? No. Of anybody know? Besides being Who'd, there. Who do you think would do something like this? She's she's nice. She's well liked. She's a teacher. Everybody knows her and loves her. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, we do butt heads every once in a while. Like we yell at each other about little stuff, but it's like, mm. who doesn't? Mm -hmm. Basically, they're family. Okay. Wow, well, like to, Olive Garden. If I had to say. Someone who did it, I would probably say the person that tried to break in the other day. There's a police report about that. Someone tried to open the door while I was there. Which is definitely not me. What do you want, like, I don't know. What? I don't, Bruce gets all mad sometimes, like when he drinks, but I, he wasn't drinking or anything today, I don't think. But that's the only thing I can think of. She's told us a few times if he comes home, like when he's drinking, just to leave or call the cops and stuff. But he isn't, she hasn't done that in a long time. So I think he's kind of changed a little bit. But I really doubt he would do that. He really loves her. I think he really cares about her. 
but everyone, I mean, she's great. I don't know anyone who would hurt her. She's a teacher. People come up to the back it, door all the time. You know, it's, it would, that seems odd to oh, me. Fuck. Is when you heard I clicked Bruce something. Screaming. And a video started so, playing. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so initially, you were afraid the baby. What the? But you, long ago, you'd come in, you'd go to the scream. So you're looking for Bruce, number one. And then well, it's more really with the baby because Kyle's. Well, you're assuming that you're wondering if it's the baby, and you're gonna. If Bruce is screaming, so he must see something. With he the just baby. screamed once. He wasn't constantly screaming. Okay. That's what you're trying to say. So he screamed. Yes. You're worried about the baby, so you're gonna go to Bruce because you're assuming the baby's by him, right? That's well, why he'd be I was just looking for the carrier. I set her down inside, and when I looked in the door and she wasn't there, I really thought it was about her. Why he was yelling. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's just hard to believe that you would see him standing there and see a scene like that. You know, you said you went right to the, the room and... I was just looking for the baby, I guess. You know, because it's not a very big house. So, I mean, when you come into that, out of that hallway there, you could see Bruce real easily, you know. So, you couldn't pass him up. I was just looking for Pretty the convenient, baby. Jeff! I, say, I guess. I just I wanted to make sure my daughter was safe. I'm pulling out my calculator. Yeah, Excuse so me. Really I'm tabulating nerd shit. That. I wasn't. I'm not trying to ignore her. Well, that's what you're trying to say. You know, he screamed one. So leave me alone. What did he scream? Like, what was he? Saying? I was out. I don't know. It was loud and it was. He's pulling scary. his calc out. I ran in to see what it was. Was it high pitch? I'm trying to see how much myth ore I can buy at the blast furnace so I can smith more. Leave me alone. Help or just something short like that. And that panicked you that much to run in the house and look for the baby? Well, I just set her down and Kyle has hit her a few times, so I got scared, yes. He's whipping his call out. When I walked right in, set her down, walked out, heard him yell, walk in, the baby's not there. The first thing I think of was, where's the baby? Why is the baby not there? What's wrong? Where's the baby? So you physically ran? Or did well, you walk in? Like, walked really fast. I didn't run, run. If that's what you're thinking. And didn't see Bruce. Well, I looked and I... How'd the Just baby move? For the baby. Um, That's what I wanted to know. Where the baby was. Why the baby wasn't where she was. Obviously well, with his really legs? <laughs> well, if I heard somebody yell, if I heard you yell... I'd be looking for it's you. It's definitely not because he's lying. I'd be looking for it's you. Because the one-year-old baby like, what you, what's wrong? got up and sprinted so out. This is really odd to me that the baby went, "Good golly, a murder!" and ran. Actually, that's not true. He didn't sound like that. He went, "What the deuce is happening?" Then he ran away, going, "Brian, Brian, get in here!" <laughs> you don't even see Bruce, and he's the one that yelled, and he wasn't screaming like, "Ooh, Brian, you'll never believe what I've just seen, Brian." Where is that damn dog? E, e, e. <laughs> Brian, the baby is sus. Oh, I think I'm gonna retire. I think I'm uh I think I'm retiring. That was a tough one to read. You're sorry? No, you're not. That was a tough one. And like he just screamed, he just yelled once, like, ah, you know, so that's not really that scary. Ah. So you go in, and you don't run in, so it's not like you ran in and <laughs> said, you, you fast paced walk, and then you just don't even see him. You you just dismiss him, go to the right. You see him, but you don't see the rest. Well, good golly gosh, it's Jeffrey, it sounds like your argument. It's a pile right, of shit. But you see him, but you don't see everything else, and you went to the right. So you know what, guys? You know what? When I. When I enter a room after somebody screams, I would for sure not look down at the body on the floor. I would be looking for my child, which is a fair reflex, I imagine, as a father. Benefit of the doubt, I imagine that's a fair reflex. I also don't understand why he's dying on this hill, because I feel like this is a weird thing to, like, try to convince them of. You know what I mean? It's like, no, I swear. I swear I super didn't see it at first or something. Like, w w why are we arguing this? For what purpose? You know what I mean? You know what I fucking mean? Uh, how do you, just, like, how do you see him and not look down? I just like wasn't like paying attention. I don't know. I was looking for the baby. All I wanted to see was the baby. What was wrong? What was going there's, on? There's no way, Jeff. There's no way you could see him. Sit back and get some there. water. What are you talking about? Why are people saying take a break? What are you talking about? Are you guys bots? What am I reading? What are we talking about?
Take a break from what? Staring at a video? This is not hard. <laughs> I'm doing nothing right now. What are we talking about? This guy has said take a break like five times. I just looked at his chat history. What are you talking about? What are you, my dad? What are we talking about? I'm sitting here watching a video. <laughs> Hold on, guys. This is really wearing me out. I gotta say, guys, this is real. Whoo! I'm really losing it staring at a murder suspect be an idiot and making fun of him with my criminology expertise. <sighs> Thank God someone in Twitch chat is telling me I need to take a step back. I don't know what I would have done without him being the 26 year old functioning adult I am. Thank God. And then I go to the right without seeing Mel. There's no way, especially in a small kitchen like that. Oh fuck. I don't know. I just didn't. I don't know what you want me to say. It was just not believable. This is impossible <laughs> to to walk in that house to look over and see Bruce. It truly yelled, is. And it truly is unbelievable. Wrong, and then there's no way you can miss that. I mean, there's no way you can miss that. <laughs> Absolutely yes. correct. I don't know. I just, you guess. All I wanted was the baby. I just wanted her. All I wanted was the baby. <laughs> reaching, like, reaching in, setting her down, and walking I wanted out, the baby. Coming back after you hear someone yell and she's not there. It's kind of scary. I wanted to see where the hell she was. Oh, no. Once I figured out where she was, I looked around. Mel was there. Where is my offspring? Right me. That's when we were talking about the 911. Call 911. He went to his bags. I just didn't register it, I guess. I don't know. Well, when did you see Mel? Kind of when I turned around, I noticed she was there. Turned around from the family room? Yeah. I reached down. Picked up the baby's carcass, looked at it, and I turned around. Kind of like, where is, that, where is the baby carrier? Where's the baby? Uh, you know where the second chair was? Of the thing? It was right on the edge, like nearly in the family room, nearly not in the family room. Nice. Technically in the family room, but. Like still on the tile, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just, it just seems really hard to miss that, you know, especially when. Especially when you say you saw him, but you don't see her. It's so true, though. Like, like how if you heard somebody scream and like people can scream similarly, I guess. But it's definitely not because you thought it was your kid because it's a grown ass man screaming. So how could you like hear a grown man scream, realize it's probably Bruce in this situation and not immediately look at him who's standing over a body unconscious? Why would you be like, where's my child? Where's my child? I'm scared. It seems a bit wild. Just saying. It's just, it's almost impossible. I'm not looking at the floor. I wasn't really trying to... Almost like he's... He he almost he like he's lying. The floor. I don't know. I just was... Hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to see where Aurora was. That was like my main objective, I guess. Hmm. I didn't. Okay. All right. Um, let's walk you out. Do you have any more questions about my story? Or? No. Let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. This interrogation ends here. Jeffrey will be back to answer some more questions after the police are able to put more time into their investigation. They will find that quite a bit of Jeffrey's story did not match the evidence. I can't believe it. Jeffrey had filed a police report stating that somebody had tried to open the door to the home and that he had scared them away. This was one of his many break-in stories. However, Jeffrey was unaware that there are several cameras in the area that point in the direction of his home. Okay, uh, let me just uh, go over a couple of things with you. Okay. Uh, do you know that there's cameras in, your, in the back facing your house? No. There is. Where? On the playground. Deerfield. Okay. Awkward. It literally hits your house. <gasps> and your Jeffrey. To the house to the right of you. All right. You didn't know that? No. Okay. So what you're telling me. Just got is here. Why is Peter Griffin and going to jail? There, you put <laughs> um, Joey on a leash for a little bit. Me. Moose never went outside. <laughs> you never stayed out on the, on the deck. <laughs> with them. Well, I'm not trying to lie. I'm just saying that's what I normally do. Okay. Um, 
So with that in mind, this camera. It's like the one time uh, I killed my mother-in-law. <laughs> so we're trying to get into the house. <laughs> yes. Well, that camera captures the back of your house. No one came to your house. Well, then someone was, sir, I'm telling you what I saw. But I'm telling you what was captured on surveillance camera. LOL. Our officers are there. They dust <laughs> your door. That's all, all on camera. Nobody. You said you he came to the door, you got the door, and the Lewis dinosaur. tried to, to get him, tried to get out, got wedged in the door. None of that happened. Real. Oh, the fuck, dude? I don't know. What the hell? Someone Are you saying I'm lying, bro? Jeff. You fucking. Told, listen, you didn't. You how dare me, you? You were face to face with him. What the shit, broski? There's no fucking way you're saying I'm a lawyer right now, dude. So why did you call? Why did you call us and say someone tried to get in the house? Someone did try to get in the house, I swear. No, they didn't. Oh. Again, it's on camera. I'm not trying to. We watched the whole day, Jeff. Uh-oh. Why would you make that up? I didn't make it up. Creates crimes in his own home, doesn't notice a camera. So that's a great thing about surveillance cameras. It's there, it's live. Our guys are there, you called us. We're there. Nobody comes to your back, nobody, nobody comes to your sliding glass door. None of that happened. And furthermore, did you know I talked to your Aunt Jeannie? Yeah. Did she tell you what we spoke about? No. She didn't? We were there last night. Okay, did she tell you my conversation with her? No. Did you tell your Aunt Jeannie that Moose bit the guy, and there was blood everywhere. I did do that to make, because my mom, mother and father don't like the dog. I was trying to say that. Well, they probably so don't like the dog because they're in a park pit, and they're probably worried about his gun to bite somebody. Yeah. Bruh. Well, that doesn't help your dog. Doesn't help your case. So you lie to your aunt. Pitbull's done I nothing did. wrong, I bro. I said it to my parents, too. You can ask them. Okay. So that didn't happen. What didn't happen? Someone tried to get your house. I thought... The door moved and everything. Though. The door moved. Jeff, you said you saw a hand. Let's let's come... The let's door! The it's a door! It was a ghost! Quick, get the Ouija <laughs> board out of the evidence locker again! <laughs> so your aunt didn't share our conversation. So let me... No. Let me, uh... Tell you a little bit more about it. You didn't get to your aunt's until six o'clock. Give me all your money. Six o'clock, not not four. Oh 30. my gosh! Six o'clock. A haunted shopping list. <laughs> I got there long before six. No, you didn't. You were late. You even you texted your aunt. I just if this jogs your memory, you texted your aunt. At five o'clock, they haven't even left yet. So you could have, have been hallucinating. No, he was hallucinating. He could get away with this crime. For three. L. Because you were getting Aurora ready. Okay. That's what I, I texted her something that was on mm -hmm. That's that's the beauty of technology and, and Te phones and technology. surveillance cameras because it doesn't lie. True. So I don't expect you to remember everything to the minute. But the phones, the camera, I don't need to ask. It tells me exactly. I don't need to ask. ask. So you don't even, you're not even at your aunt's house before five. She says you don't even get there until six. And then by the time you left, you don't even have time to go back home and back to Applebee's. Uh-oh. That's what I did, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Jeffrey. I think you're kind of fucked. Did you ask what was wrong? No. Oh, because I can answer that. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I don't think you want him to answer it, Jeff. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Jeffrey, don't tell him. Don't say to answer it. Don't. I, s I swear to God, he. I said same way. Okay, it didn't happen. Oh. 
Jeff, do you know where I'm going with this? I do. I was never oh, heard of oh. like this. You probably could say that I did it, right? Jeff. No. You're telling me something happened that didn't happen. You don't, you don't have to sit there and try to jog your memory because it didn't happen. I swear. Do you know? Do you know what time Melinda I really swear. got home that day? Because it wasn't at three, like you said. It's not true. She got home. I don't know. I don't know. Twasn't me, officer. Well, let me just tell you this. It was much later than what you're telling me. Melinda doesn't come home when you say she comes home. What time did she get home? Doesn't matter. It's much later than what you're telling me. So your whole. Remember when we first talked, I questioned you, you looked a little irritated about how long, even at that point, when I didn't know as much as I know now, and you said you left at 3. Melinda came home, you left right away. You said you didn't get your aunts until 4.30. And even I questioned that. I said it's an awfully long time to, from, from uh, Blazing Star to Abigail is roughly, what, how many miles? I have never Four? It. Five? So I questioned it. You seemed you seemed uh, aggravated that I would even question it. I said that's an awfully long time to get from point A to B, run out of gas, when someone came and helped you 20 to 30 minutes after you broke down. So now, not only is the hour and a half, now the hour and a half becomes three hours, three hours from when you told me you left, and then by the time you get to your aunt's. So what happens in that time frame? I left when she came home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm... When she walked in the door, I walked out. Jeff. Sorry. I'm sorry. You okay? I'm shocked. I don't know what's... I saw somebody. What did, you, what did you, how did you feel when we took your truck? Did you know we took your truck? Uh, my dad told me. He said it was on the news. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you think that, what do you think I about just that? figured you took it. Mm -hmm. You took all the cars in the driveway and didn't take anything of it. You did probably didn't dust it? anything for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we mm -hmm. sent that mm -hmm. to the lab. Yeah. Okay. What do you think that we found? You probably found blood. We've cut our hands a million times in it. Mm -hmm. Your blood? No. I didn't. I haven't cut myself in a while. Who? Well, you said you cut yourself. You guys cut yourselves all the time. Who's we? Me and my father. Okay, but you never cut yourself. Not any time recently. No, I'm different. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. This, this, this is where we're at, okay? All right, this is your chance to let the weight of the world off your shoulders, because I know it's on there. All right. I hate done anything wrong, sir. Where you're at right now, okay, you could either make this better for yourself and the family, or you could continue down this road where it's just gonna get worse for you. Am I being charged with something? Yes. Got so, him. Let me tell you this. Let me just tell you this, okay? Hey, do All right, listen to me. Yes. Okay, you're under arrest. What the freaking heck, out. officer? You're under arrest, okay, for the murder of Melinda Pleskovic. Okay? So, why don't you stand up, face away from me. I didn't do anything, Do you have anything sir. on you that shouldn't be on you? No. No. No, I don't. For someone who was able to manipulate so many people, Jeffrey had finally met his match. Pretty bad at hiding Even it. how Jeffrey says he is innocent shows how guilty he really is. An innocent person would fill with rage at the fact that anyone could think they are capable of such evil. Yeah, they'd usually be upset Jeffrey about Jeffrey is it. barely able to speak as he does his best to mumble that he didn't do it. I will say everybody behaves differently. Now that he has differently, been officially but, charged yeah. and arrested, 
The detectives want to see how he reacts to more questioning. Yeah, get him. The shoe has dropped. Let's go. Let me, uh, let me, this is when it gets really do fun. Do you want to talk to me a little bit more after understanding your rights to try to make this better? Sure. sure. Personally, guys, personally, there's usually two detectives, by the way. I know you guys are always baffled that there's a second detective in the room, but usually there's two detectives and one leads point. That way there's like a bit of direction given only by one person. So there's not like overlapping and that way there's like a second person to make sure everything's going well and maybe to even get a fresh pair of ears and and, and eyes and questions and stuff so there's usually a second detective and one is usually more dominant within the interrogation than the other yeah but yeah personally when i get accused of murdering i do the same thing i go what the heck guys <laughs> i mean such a classic response i mean he's it's so so natural sure okay uh you can stop the the questioning or conversation anytime you want. Jeff, look at me, okay? Look at me. All right. What happened that day that would make you do something like this? Because you don't seem like the type to do this. Yeah, he does. I, she, she took me in. I never... Right. That, and that help, help me understand. Help this family understand. Jeff, when I asked you, does this family get along? You said, yeah. You said it's a great family. You said they took you in. Imagine being his fiance. Melinda was paying for your wedding. We've talked to a number of people. You know who was, you know who was the most excited about most excited about your wedding? Do you Why did I phrase it like it happens a lot? Because it doesn't. That's the whole fucking point. People don't just get accused of murder. So usually when they are, they're pretty fucking mad about it. Or pretty distraught. They don't go, what? <laughs> Guys, what the heck? I didn't do that. You know? No. So he did walk into jail. Moving on. Who do you who do you think is the most excited about it? Anna? Possibly. Melinda. Everybody we spoke to talked about how. Right, way to get an obvious answer wrong, you dumb prick. I'm sorry, can we move these around? I, Are they Yeah, I'm like my hands are hurting really bad. Sure. I'm sorry, I can't put okay. my hands back. That's okay. Answer. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Stand, stand up for me, Jeff. We're gonna push you, uh, cuff you in the front. Okay. Feel better? Yeah. Okay. My shoulder was hurting. Sure. sure. You want something to drink? I didn't, I didn't hurt anybody. Do you want something to drink? Would you like something to drink? I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Everybody we spoke to, Melinda was very excited for your wedding. Okay. You brought her. A granddaughter. So what happened that day that would lead you to do this? Because you don't seem like the type to do it. I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Fucking child. Jeff, listen. You can make this better or worse. Sir, I didn't do anything. Okay. You must have a ton of pressure on you. And you, you could probably take a lot of this pressure off starting now to do the right thing and help everybody understand what happened that would lead you to do this. I'm sorry, but I didn't do anything. I didn't. She was basically my mom. Right. She took you in. Crocodile to your time. You guys never fought. We have, you know, like arguments live in there. Not, not nothing like. I'm not going to be upset and cry about the person who I just basically called my mom being killed. But when I'm getting accused of killing her, that's when I'm going to start crying, by the way. Smile. Not weird at all. I understand that. It's crazy. But you don't take your clothes down. Something like that. Talking to you like it, that your like, son yeah. took you in. Like one of her own. Can I flip my hands around? Or did that, you know, not, oh my god, bro. Cry. Didn't hurt anybody. But you did, and I want to understand why. But you did. <laughs> uh. Listen, like, once again, I mean, we're fully aware that I'm very much on the side of fuck police, but like, this is one of my favorite parts of an interrogation room when the police just stop pulling punches. I, there's just something special about it. There's something really entertaining about it. And like, 
I don't love the police, but like this is a really funny part of their job when they they really back a suspect into the corner and they just they just start throwing left hook after left hook and they're like, shut the fuck up, like shut up. <laughs> it's it's pretty entertaining. I mean, like at the end of the day, it's it's pretty entertaining. Gotta love it sometimes. Hurt anybody, Jeff? You have an eighteen-month-old. She's my world. Daughter. I would never. Your world. Not anymore, bitch. The it world is your jail so. cell. Do you want to start making this right so you can see her one day? Or do you want to keep going down this path? I'm not trying to go down a path. I didn't do anything, sir. I didn't do anything, sir. <laughs> never do anything. I didn't do anything, sir. But, Up sir! Until this point, Jeffrey has been answering questions, with the goal of being to help find his mother-in-law's killer. But now that he has been arrested, he should remain silent and wait to speak with a lawyer. Nah, he should have been silent the whole fucking Jeffrey, time. He just can't help himself, and he believes he can manipulate himself out of this situation. He should be silent the whole time. The whole time. Because if somebody close to you is dead, the first people the police are going to suspect are the people close to them. And whether or not you like it or not, the police are not your friend. So they will 100% try to make it work because they might not know everything. Shocking, I know. So they might just assume it's you. So they're definitely going to just like get work with what they get. And if you're just answering questions, and if you're especially as dumb as Jeff and your questions don't make fucking sense, you might just get accused of doing it even if you didn't. So... It's not that he should shut up the second he's be he got arrested. He should have shut up to begin with. So Jeff, did something happen that day that just made you really angry really fast? No. Was 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 Melinda uh, and hey. about Hey! Hey! Cut it out. What are you guys doing? Good goodness. My dogs are going crazy. Ah! Ah! Son of a bitch. Ugh. Let's build some coffee. Let's keep watching. Not the wedding or anything like that. No. Did you guys have words that day? Yeah. And what happened? We, we talked about little stuff and then she went to Not the my doctor. decaf. Right. But when I say have words, did, was there any kind of disagreement that no. day? No. None at all? Yeah, I was stabbing her and she was telling no. me to stop. Did Melinda ever say things to Not you? Not rude of her. Got you upset? I mean, no, none. No. Never. Smile? No, not that day. I've been upset with her before, but never, never angry. angry. Well, I just said ever. Oh, what, ever? What were the, <sighs> now I got coffee would, on my what pants. What were the things that Melinda would do that would sort of push your buttons? It's the worst day ever. Your skin? Just she would say comments, I love you and comments, you know, I'm happy to, for you to be my son. No, she, did anything like that, I'd just go so she, would, she would support me and I shit. Would she insult you? Fucked up. Like, she'd make comments about weight or anything like that. It's little stuff. Nothing, nothing. Right. Nothing crazy. I just walk away. I would just sure. leave. Right. I'm telling you, dude. These are the best anything, parts. Sir. Stop pissing myself. It looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. Well, to be actually, no, not actually. It's actually quite flattering if you think I pissed myself because it's pretty far away from my, uh, pretty far down my leg. So, <laughs> thank you guys. Wow. I mean, you guys implied it, not me. So, you know, I accept your compliment, chat. That's really nice of you. I'm just a very blessed streamer. What can I say? I have a nice, uh, educated audience. So, that's you guys. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, you guys. Gotta say. <laughs> so, he did piss himself. <laughs> I got him. Fuck, dude. You caught me. So he did shit his own pants. I knew it. I'm going to let this keep playing. I got to pee and I got to go get more coffee now. No reason. I, sure. I got to go change my pants. It's not because I peed my pants. I didn't do anything, sir. What's the murder weapon? We have the knife. 
it has your DNA on it and it has her blood on it. So how is that possible? I, I don't know. Jeff, listen to me. We've investigated this for many, many hours now and we've come across a lot of, of untruths that you've told us. Lots of lies. Okay, things that you've told us that just don't pan out. While we're sitting in this room right now is the time to stop that. Okay? It's, it's time to stop with, with not being truthful. And listen, you're going to look back on this as this, was, this is your opportunity to talk to us. Okay? Sir, so put all, put all the fabrication that's going on up in that head of yours right now. And let's just get to what happened that day. Sir, you understand I, what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, but okay. I, didn't, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. What happened that day, Jeff? I told you guys what happened that day. I left. Mm -hmm. I got broken down for gas. May I help me? The, the Good Samaritan that never came, you never went to, you never went to Gecko. No, you weren't in Gecko. You weren't in Gecko. Video again, Jeff. Another story. Jeff, you're going to feel better whatever happened that day, at least giving some reason, get it off your chest. This is your chance to, to make it right. I did not do anything, though. I do did not do, do anything, though. I do. I love do that you baby. Love Aurora? I do you love Aurora? <laughs> yes. Uh, and Bruce? Yes. Is uh, that someone that you, you want? Is that uh, thank God I got my... Family? Thankfully, I got more coffee. It's not... Nothing's going to go wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is my water. Give, to hurt them. give me the truth so I could tell them and help them understand why this happened. Did I get more... Pen Pants? No, I'm used to living with liquid in my pants. Happened. I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. <sighs> Why is he scoughing like a teenager? Did you understand that? I didn't do anything. You told us <sighs> not only the, the burglary, but the day of, that none of it is, is panned out. <sighs> Getting money from your mom. Gosh. Your mom knows nothing about the money. She was never contributing anything to the to the wedding. She wasn't even supposed to meet that night. Melinda, who's the most excited about the wedding, would have never cancel a meeting about the wedding. Skyview took meticulous notes, and anybody that's met your was going to be your mother-in-law. What? All they could say is how excited she was. Melinda's not canceling any meetings about the wedding, especially four or five days beforehand. She's not doing it. What happened that day that would make you do I don't this? Because it doesn't seem like something that you would do. That's right, yeah. Jeff. I don't think you. I don't think you meant to do this. But yeah. we we need to know what happened. Sir, I didn't you can do listen. You sir, can go a long it, ways it, it, helping the family understand things by being truthful with us now. But that's, that, sir, that's the best thing you have to offer at this point is helping the family to have some understanding, because you caused the death of Melinda, and we know that you did. Um, uh, don't keep this locked up in, in your head, okay? Tell us what happened. I, Jeff, tell me right now, what happened that day? Rose really acting like a man, baby. No, what happened between you and Melinda? Nothing. Get it off your chest. Sir. Nothing. Stop. Nothing happened. This scoffing is pissing me off. Shut up, dude. Jeff, Melinda's death was caused by somebody that that knew her. It's the silly it was guy. By someone in her circle, and it's the um, silly guy who named his daughter a really fucked up name. Come on. I didn't hurt anybody? I didn't do anything. Jeffrey continues to claim innocence, but it's interesting to note Joe that he wife. doesn't actually use Melinda's name or how she was killed. Instead, he says things like. 
I didn't do anything, and I wouldn't hurt anyone. By describing Melinda and her death in this way, it allows Jeffrey to put distance between himself and the crime, true. and it makes it far easier for him to lie about it. Very true. Okay. Good observation. All I can tell you is you're being charged with Melinda's death, and as this case progresses, people are going to look and see if you are cooperative. We're going to look and see how, how you behave since you've you been know, charged. You know Classic. Look at Jeff. Classic cop it's one technique. Thing to make a mistake and something spirals out of control. But you know what people are going to look at the most and remember is they want to know If why you told us everything, smile. No, no reason. <laughs> and we don't have the why. <laughs> Nobody's gonna understand. I think I think the general public would really appreciate if you told the police everything, Jeffrey. <laughs> haven't shown any remorse. So well, let's let me go back to Aurora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then when the day of reckoning comes, and if it Come goes on. Around, <laughs> and it comes to a day of sentencing, the judge is gonna ask me, "Did he show any remorse?" I'm gonna say none. She's gonna ask me, "Why would he do this?" I don't know. But the physical evidence shows that you did it, Jeff. And you can't escape that. Not to mention all of the untruths and all the lies that, that we already... All the untruths uh, and all the it. lies? Bro. <laughs> I never hurt anybody. I didn't do anything else with the baby all day. Just say lies, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hurt anybody. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to anybody. You know, listen, Jeff. There's nothing you could say to us right now that's going to remove the cuffs. But there are things that you can say that's going to help you down the line. So like, tell the police better, everything. That's super going to do or something for you, you later, Jeff. This path of just not being honest. Just be honest. I didn't, I didn't hurt you, anybody. You'll feel a lot better when you're honest. Everybody will feel a lot better <laughs> when you're honest. I am being honest. I didn't... God. They're so gross. You'll feel really good when you tell us everything we need to know, Jeff. Trust me. I didn't do that. You'll feel Word super good about it. It definitely won't fuck you over. Where's the gun? I don't have a gun. Where is it? I don't have a gun. The only guns I had were the ones downstairs that you took. Yeah. Well, again, that's another story that didn't add up after talking to your parents. What? Jeff, we didn't we didn't arrest you the night of. No. You you came in here a couple of days later. That was not you neither one of those were an interrogation. It was just to figure out who you are. What happened over there? I want to know what happened. So all week long, everything that you told me hasn't panned out. I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't do anything. Bruh. I'm just pouting. You want, you want me to go tell that family. I really should have moved my camera the second the camera was positioned this way. I'm a fool. There and not be able to give them anything, any understanding. Sir, so so they, they could sit there at night and wonder why this would You can't even muster a fake cry. The same person that took you into their home as one of their own. That's how shit this guy is. And that's what you're going to leave me with? I'm not trying to do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Within 20 minutes, all Jeffrey can do is mumble that he didn't do anything and that he wouldn't hurt anyone. He continues to act like all of this is Damn, just a minor inconvenience, and he is more concerned about the tightness of his handcuffs than anything else that is happening. That's incredible. After 20 minutes, the detective has had enough, and he turns up the heat. Okay, let him cook. You would never intend to. You wouldn't want to. Unfortunately, Jeff, things happen. Okay? And if you want... The, the worst thing you can do is not let anybody understand what happened. Okay? 
listen, Anna and Bruce could have some peace with this, but only you can provide that. Okay, a terrible, terrible thing has happened. Do you understand? Do you understand that? Yeah. Melinda is gone and she's not ever coming home again. She's, she's never going to get to handle Kyle again. Okay, you caused that. You understand? You caused that. And now you're going to sit here and continue with this behavior of lying. And we, you can't let that happen, Jeff. This is your opportunity to do something good for a change. Let's switch this up. Stop lying to the police and ruining a family. Maybe you can take a step in the right direction. Okay? This is your chance to do something good. Now tell us what happened. What did Melinda do? What caused this? I didn't do anything. Bruh. Jeff, I didn't do anything. Right now. I don't want to hear those words come out of your mouth again. What happened that day? Come on. I'm serious about this. You can do good here. You can help Bruce and you can help Anna. Understand. Your mom, your dad. Yeah, <laughs> your mom. Help everybody understand. <laughs> I thought Jeff, he was just going to be like, your mom. Get it off your chest. I have nothing to get off my chest. <laughs> your mom, Jeff. Your mom. <laughs> and your dad. That's it. That's the tweet. <laughs> You know what? Maybe you just are a bad person. Maybe this is a waste of time. Oh and my god! That, and that's what they'll go to bed with. You're just not a good person. Damn! Even, even bad people eventually do the right thing. You're Holy them, fuck! Right? You're just a you're just a bad person, right? <laughs> so I will go to your mom. I will go Woo! to your dad, and that's exactly what I'll let them. He's know. roasting him. At the sun, they He's char broiling Jeff all of a sudden. Zero remorse, god damn! Can't do the right thing. Woo! It's getting Even toasty. Can't let your own family, their family, have a little bit of peace of mind because you're going to be selfish and you're going to sit there in jail. Goodness and fucking I'm gracious! Not giving these families anything. Because I didn't do anything when everything points to you. I, ha I have fucking get no him. worries. At I love it. Forward. Once again, bro. I mean, y'all know, fuck the police. But like, holy shit, is this not so fucking juicy? This is such the, this is the best part of a case like this. When somebody who does such a stupid crime and gets, and doesn't get away with it at all, like completely fucks it up, fumbles it fully. And just can't accept that he's caught. I love when this happens. I love this scenario because the police just, you get the right detective in there and you get this guy where he's just fucking cooking him over as an open flame, dude. It's so good. About this case, nothing that you said about that day is truthful. There's surveillance cameras everywhere you said you were. None of that stuff happened. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about trying to 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 figure out why you're lying to me anymore so you could let your own family wonder what happened to the kid they raised and how he became so bad there's not many people that sit across here people do things wrong all the time but the good people will say well this is why i did it. i made a dumb mistake or it, it turned into this i don't even know how i wish i could go back i wish i could go back in time and make something different you can't even do that you you sit there you sit there dumbfounded and, and keep and keep just going back to bottling it up and being selfish and not giving these families any peace of mind. So maybe you just are a bad person. And they'll just they'll just have to accept that. Bad people do bad things. But you're sitting here because the physical evidence is going to show what you did, Jeff. We don't. No. To be honest with you, we don't need a confession from you. So that's up to you. The, the confession, in honesty, Jeff. We're trying to help the family. It's going to help your work. family. Yeah, fuck Melinda's you, Jeff. We don't give a shit about you. Help you. You may not feel that right now. Do you want to lay down? Finally, just lay down and. Like, I finally did something right. I'm trying to make the best of the situation. I, I want to come home with my daughter. I didn't do it. I would never do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do anything. I, t I left. I left. Hey, Jeff, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not. 
I'm going to ask you as nicely as I can. I'm going to explain this as nicely as I can. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you you right now can do something good out of something bad. He's you filleting him. <laughs> you can't change it, but you can make this a lot better. Holy For everybody shit. everybody involved, be selfish. Think about it. It's yourself. a hibachi bar in here, dude. Out. He's got him in the One onion day, tower. Do you, you want to see your daughter? Jeff's in the onion volcano with the oil going yeah. in. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you this. You're, you're telling me you didn't do it? And, okay, listen to me. Look at me. Look at me. You're telling me you didn't do it? Look at me, Jeff. Too bad. If the roles were reversed and I was sitting there, I would do everything I can to prove my innocence. Everything. Listen, you're not looking at me anymore. Sorry. You know where I would start? I like this guy. He's funny. I offered you a polygraph the other day. Take a polygraph. Prove yourself. Prove yourself that you're that you're you're innocent. That this this all this. Take a polygraph and just, just give the police more, more stuff to work with, Jeff. Come on. I'm not asking if you did anything. I know you did something, but I just want to know why. Come on, Jeff. I want to know what just what, give the police more information, Jeff. You want to be cool, right? Day. You know, help help everybody understand. So with the police to like you, right? You want to sit at the lunch table with the police, today, right, Jeff? Thinking about when you're gonna get out and see your daughter. Because right now, don't even bother thinking about it. It's not going to happen. So do you want to take a polygraph? Uh, my mom told me to ask her about all that stuff. I don't know. I, 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 you didn't ask is, her a lot? What? This is the same mom that I got to call in here. Oh. Help her understand how Get him. a mother's son can Get do him. something. Oh. And she's like, why would he ever do that? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, Mrs. Wilson. I, I I don't know. Maybe he's just a really bad person. So, do you want to take a polygraph or not? You need to talk to your not mom the mom card. Me. Well, I t we must be completely different people because if I was sitting there, a I would be extremely I would be I, I would be extremely angry and determined to prove my innocence. I didn't do anything. I didn't. And I, and and if I did do something. Damn, Jeff sure was talkative earlier. Now he can't even say more than three words, man. And no, I definitely didn't have to think about how many words were in I didn't do anything. And also it was four. <laughs> All right, let's move on. I would jump at the chance to make it right. <laughs> I would be selfish, like... I, w I want to get out of here. Shut the fuck I want, up. I want the least, the most lenient <laughs> sentence I could get. I want to help help people understand. Yeah, I'm not a bad person, but man, I did a really bad thing on one day. I can't take it back, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make it better. And you can't do that. Be selfish. Do it. Jeff, is this sunk in? You're under arrest for murder right now. The murder of Melinda. Murder Melinda. Well, well. Okay, Jeff. Well, we don't want to take up any more of your time. Well, um, we have a responsibility to talk to uh, the family, your family. All right. So you you could embarrass yourself, and when you're you'll have the opportunity to make a phone call at some point. You can embarrass yourself and and try to fool mom and and everybody else, I'm and to fool you know. It, yeah, you were, bitch. Pretty pathetic. <laughs> Jeff, when you're, um, we're going to take you back to, back to a jail cell in a little bit. And I want, here's something I want you to think about, because here's something I found out about you. I think, I think your whole mature life, you, you lie. You lie about everything. That's what I'm finding out. And I want you to sit back there and think that maybe it's time to, it's, maybe it's time to stop that. Because look where it's, first of all, look, look where you are. Okay? Kind of true. Um, and you're 20 years old now. What? Okay. It's, t it's time to stop with the lie. It's not, that's not how you go through life. You, you, okay? You know what the, the one advantage you have for you? Like Sergeant Urbana said, you're 20. You, you, you have, you're not, you're not 70 when you're doing this and have no 20 chance. acting like you're a tween. 20. You could be an adult. You could have a, a life beyond this with your daughter. You're not going to get that. You know what you're doing right now. 
didn't do anything. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I left. I left. Oh, well, you're free to go. Convincing response. New response from Jeff, everybody. Definitely didn't say it earlier. Jeff, you weren't even remorseful uh, yes. that night. You haven't been remorseful just since the time that I met you that night to, to now. I have a really hard time accepting that. I have a hard time having to, for us to have to talk to your family and not at least be able to say, man, he did something wrong, but man, he wishes he could do anything. If you could do anything, he'd take it back. That is livable. They, they're they're going to have to heal and move on, and that would be a big part of make it, letting them do that. Your family, not just there, not just Melinda's family, your family, so you're going to make them sit there and lay in bed at night and wonder, like, how in the hell did this happen? Why would he do that? Well, we don't know. Because Jeff's going to stick to his stomach, stick to his story, and, you know... I feel like the pixels have been slowly absorbing the footage. Wow, we're, we're right there. Okay. I feel like yeah, Jeff has become slowly mo less and less distinguishable. You are gonna feel so. It doesn't much help better. he wore. It doesn't help he wore something that blends in with the floor and the door too, because he's really like bleeding everywhere. I really can't tell where when he is. Explain why. Like it's real hard to tell what's going on with him. All I see is his mouth open. You know, detective, I just, I, I, I snapped. Okay. I didn't know how to get out of it. Then I got scared. I mean, something. That feels Jeff, fairly that knife coercive. With Melinda's blood on it. It was in your truck and has your DNA on the handle. That's not the only piece of evidence we have. Oh, wow. I've chosen to show you that one. Damn, Jeff, you're a real fucking okay. crook, bro. What a clever one. So. Let's hide the weapon in my car. I'm sure they I won't find it. The only thing to anyone um, is just not going to carry it very far. Okay. So, but we're about done here. Genius Jeff over um, here. If we're not lying to you, you can make it better for yourself and someday see the light of day, or you can make it worse. And you're going to be kicking yourself because yep. you're you're making it worse. <laughs> and I just don't understand that. Oh, my God. I'm so tired of hearing make it. By I'm losing my shit. Your mom. Now, Jeff, you're under arrest for murder and you're an adult. You don't make decisions now by asking your mom. Okay, That's you're beyond that. You're, you're way beyond that. You know, should, you know your at least you should answer. be. It was the same one she gave you that night. You didn't do anything wrong. Go ahead. Your mom. Your dad, want. Jeff. Your so mom. Of course she's going to tell you. Your mom. Your dad. <laughs> that night? No, what you asked a minute ago. What was it called? Polygraph. Sure. Jeff, what would your mom say? It's not going to save you, Jeff. If you asked her if you should tell the truth right now. This stupid, I, egotistical I, bastard thinks a polygraph's going to free him. I didn't hurt Melinda. I never did anything to Melinda. I left. God. I left. He's so fucking I annoying. I didn't do anything. She was yelling at Jeff, me. It would be impossible for you to leave, her to be alive, and you leave, and then the night that killed her to be in your truck. It is impossible that it ends up in your truck. True. I, I would. Oh, God. Okay. Right, Guys, I think he left. Oh. I don't know, guys. I'm starting to think he didn't do anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry it ended this way. I Maybe if he kind of said it the same too. way in the kind of pouty Pretty manner, like a kid closer. getting slapped on the wrist or something. Ah, oh, okay. And, and yeah, I'm convinced. I'm going to go out there with uh, <laughs> nothing. I didn't hurt her. I never did anything to her. Okay. All right, Jeff. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> We're going to walk you back to the jail. Jeffrey would finally agree to take a lie detector test, and of course he would fail miserably. What a transition. After he was told his results, Jeffrey decided it was finally time to confess and explain exactly what happened that drove him to take Melinda's life. Oh my fucking god. Wait, hold on. Actually, that's exciting because we get to actually find out the juice. You, you waited until you failed the polygraph? Are you kidding me, Jeff? I hate the police, dude. I hate how well the police have made a polygraph seem effective so she's in your room she finds the gun that ultimately was used that that was used in the shooting she found the knife she found the knife because it was with the gun she found a, a paternity test mm -hmm. okay but the paternity test shows that you're the father yeah. okay 
wait, hold up. That was a year that ultimately was used that that was used in the shooting. She found the knife. She found the knife because it was with the gun. She found a, a paternity test. <laughs> okay, but the paternity test shows that you're the father. Of. Okay. Well, obviously, and, and you are the father. Uh -huh. Okay, good, good. So the father something of what? happened where she went. She must have left, ran. Maybe she she must have threatened you. She must have did something my copy again, because Jesus. she she was ultimately uh, you know injured in the back. Okay, so back. What? Well, did you shoot her from the front or from the back? I left. I don't know. Well, I know she was she was lean, she was found how was she found? I'm face confused. Down or face up? They found a paternity test, but for who? Are they implying for the baby? I figured that was already known. He is pregnant. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. I don't know what the Wait, Right, but you were there. I mean, you you found her, right? With, with Bruce. Maybe it just means a paternity test for a kid. Maybe it, maybe it's he cheated right. on with somebody, yeah. Just you two, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Was she face down, meaning her face towards the, the, the floor? Or was it looking up? Uh, uh, down. Okay. Okay. So my understanding are the wounds were in the back. Maybe they came from the front. I'm, I'm not... That's up to you. That's what I want to find out from you. But it sounds like she finds the gun, she gets upset, she finds the, you know, the knife's there, she's concerned about this paternity test, and this creates a lot of anger in you, as you said, it makes me mad, and, you know, maybe you, maybe you grabbed the gun and then it went off, is that what happened? Is that when you grabbed the gun and it went off? Why is he pink? Okay, okay. Well, I think he's orange. I think it's the, the really good camera from the giant police budget. That or, now hear me out, or Patrick Star cosplay. Nudist Patrick Star cosplay. It's possible. It's possible. I'm just saying. Okay, and how many times do you remember shooting him? I don't remember. Okay. I grabbed the gun, it went off. I think you're right. <laughs> hmm. uh, you're on to something here. Did she continue here. out of the area or did it, when the gun went off, where were you? Were you in, the, in your area, your living room, the kitchen, the, 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 okay. I grabbed the gun, it went off. You know what, we're still, we're still not addressing the same issue of why. What, what made you so mad? What, what is so embarrassing to you? That, what is so, what is so bothersome? That when you grabbed the gun and it went off, it's because you were so mad. What was that reason that caused you to be so mad? Well, I thought he started with a knife though. <laughs> that I'm sigh so blew my hat off. What was off. the reason? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Why you grabbed the gun and then it went off and ended up shooting her. What Is was he trying to cry? That? Yeah, he's I been trying for like two we, weeks, bro. We need to let Aurora know. And she picked it up and kind of didn't necessarily point it at me, but pointed it near me. Oh she picked God. it up? It wasn't at, at Oh my god. So she was threatening you. You took she it as a screaming at me. Okay. I don't know. She screamed so oh. she picked it up right now. She so that's I'm so it's so bad. Okay. So she's screaming at you. She picks up the yep. gun. Yep, defense. Points it in your direction. God, I wonder what if mommy and do? daddy's do lawyer advised him to her? say that. That's where I don't understand. Well, you got it somehow. Father, What's that? I just reached up and grabbed it. Okay. I reached up and grabbed it. And then... And, and that's when you responded and, and it went off? 
So you felt threatened by her. Good golly gosh, Jeff, you're a genius. Okay, okay. I felt uh, threatened. There's, there, they suspect nothing. By her. And, 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 and that's what made you, is that what made you so mad? No, she was yelling, Aurora isn't yours, Aurora isn't yours. Isn't? Oh. But why, why would that look bad on Jeff then? Wouldn't that imply that the mother cheated? So it would make no sense for her to be mad about that and be mad at him, right? I'm thinking the liar's lying again, guys. Million things. Okay. So she's, she's down there. She finds the paper. She sees the gun. She picks it up, points it at you. She, she pointed it like at my feet. Okay, she points the gun at your feet, and she's yelling at you, Aurora isn't yours. Aurora isn't yours. Is that is it? Did I understand that right? Yes. Okay. And it, and that's when you grabbed the gun, and it went off. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know it had anything in it. Right. Positively rock I solid, gun. Jeffrey. I knew, I knew. I think I knew the one was loaded down there, but I didn't think it was. <sighs> It went off. I didn't think it was loaded. No, I didn't. I didn't know. Okay, it I didn't. Was that one. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know that one was loaded. Okay, uh, right, that's not that one. Oh my God. And which gun was that? I don't know. I don't know. So, was it the revolver or the semi-automatic? What? Was it a revolver or a semi-automatic? You're, you're familiar with the guns, you know. No, a revolver, sorry. It was a revolver? Okay. Right. What was so earlier you told me that you have a, uh, it, the, the revolver that you had was a 357 or the 44 Magnum. Was that it? Was it one of those two or was it another revolver? It was that one. Okay, okay. And what did you do with that 40? Did you put it back into the bag? Yeah. Guys, okay. Did I'm you? starting to believe Jeff's argument. I think it was the guy. I think it was the silly neighbor pulling pranks on his family. That definitely wasn't him setting up robbery ploys to excuse himself from stealing stuff. I think it was the. I think it was the neighbor. I think he's right. Free, free Jeffrey. <laughs> Did you clean it? No, I didn't touch it. Okay. Just put it back. Okay. Okay. And, and the police, the police see, did they, they have that bag? Yeah. Okay, okay. So it was a revolver that was used. You didn't realize that it was loaded. She, and I'm gonna go back. She originally was angry. Genius. Because she didn't think Aurora was your child. She grabbed the weapon and was pointing at your feet. Uh, and as she was screaming. It's such a genius argument because how are they going to prove that he did know or did actually mean to do it? It's not like she has like multiple stab wounds on her body after being shot or something like that. That would be crazy. Good thing it was only the gunshot. Just the one. Aiming at you, you grabbed the gun. Yep. And it went off. Uh, and uh, the I didn't think that fell. one was loaded. Oh, it of was course. a revolver. It's a 357 or 45. Are you sure in the 357 or 40? Was it a 9 or a 22 or My any? fault. I don't know. Okay. But it's the one in the bag? Yeah. Okay. It's the one in the bag. And that's the black bag that which the police have? Yeah. Okay. And then tell me about tell me about the what happened with the knife. Was you still so mad that I don't I don't know with that. That's what I don't understand. Uh, well typically Oh shit, you got the what crocs that psychologically on? represents is a lot of anger and frustration. Yep, croc. And and I'm thinking that anger and frustration... You're, you're literally wearing those exact Crocs? Um, can somebody check on this person's mother-in-law? No reason. It's stemming from her trying to take Aurora away from you. By her insinuation that you're not the father. Don't worry about it. What's that? 
Somebody, somebody look into that. It's good. Maybe look into that. <laughs> Damn, Shoddy got them cocks on. <laughs> Whoa, nice crock. <laughs> No, you're doing you're doing a fantastic job. Do you see how your memory is is coming back? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's confusing though. Right. So you see how well, you're I finally understand. admitting to it, you little and bitch. Now I understand why the anger is coming because basically your daughter, somebody is trying to rip your daughter away from you, and that's not right. That would that can make a lot of people very angry. A lot of people that want to defend their child and defend their own life. Is everything that you've told me so far the truth? Yes. Okay, would you pass another test if I tested you on that? We're not gonna do that tonight. Yes. Okay. Jeffrey would take the case to trial and no way. be found guilty and I... receive life in prison <gasps> with his first chance of parole after 33 years. <laughs> Prosecution painted a picture of LOL. a callous manipulator who stole from the family after they allowed him to move into their home. For months, yeah, he staged break-ins to cover up that he was stealing from the family. That is so fucked. After he took Melinda's life, he sat down to dinner with the family and he helped them look for her. If that wasn't enough, That's fucked up. Jeffrey was also a pallbearer at Melinda's funeral. Oh my Melinda's god. Melinda's husband, Bruce, also explained that now when they go out to eat, Little Kyle sits quietly as he looks out the window, waiting for his mother to arrive. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time here Whoa. on the Red Tree Crime YouTube channel. That's fucked up. That is fucked. Oh, man, what a piece of shit. Appreciate you guys. Crime time is always great. Have a good day, okay? Bye-bye.